If I could sum up for you in a single picture, if I could sum up for you in a single picture, why it is that feminism is failing and doomed to fail, this would be the picture I would show you. This would be the one I would show you. This one right here. We'll come back to it in a few moments because this perfectly encapsulates everything. Change is in the air and change cannot help but to be in the air because a whole bunch of people out there who got hoodwinked are finding out what reality is. I have a couple of stories I want to share for, for you that are demonstrating to you that the cracks in the wall that folks started seeing and predicting would form decades ago, well, they've come full fruition here as a bunch of unscrupulous, selfish, and criminally immature individuals who thought they were going to take out their ire against men have now found themselves on the bad end of something that they started. This is a story here from The Guardian, and I think it is worth reading and reviewing with you all. I think you'll find it well worth it here. Headline says it all. Now, this is out of the UK, sure, but headline says it all. I came out late only to find that lesbians had slipped to the back of the queue. According to Kathleen Stock, the co-director of the Lesbian Project launched last week, tells why the L of LGBTQ plus must not be allowed to disappear into the rainbow soup. So essentially what she's saying is that they've finally acknowledged the folly of trying to coalition build and that by allowing dilution of what they came there for, thinking that they were going to swell the ranks, thinking they were going to swell the ranks, that's gotten them in trouble now. That's gotten them in trouble and now they want to do over. So that should tell you a lot. Now, anybody could have predict predicted this. Anybody could have predicted this. The article says LGBTQ plus activism is everywhere in modern Britain. Alongside lesbians, gay men, and bisexual people, each year, new orientations and identities arrive to shelter under the rainbow umbrella from trans and non-binary to intersex, asexual, polyamorous. Polyamorous. Whoa. Queer and beyond. So boy. Take a look at that. Now, we all understand polyamorous. Well, hell, that's what, isn't that non-monogamy? So to any female out there trying to pressure men into monogamy, hell, it, over there, they're saying polyamorous. Why, that's just a sexual orientation. Oh, hell. Well, there goes that. It goes on to say that at a distance, it all looks admirably progressive. But when considered a bit more closely, it seems that lesbians, the L, ostensibly at the front of the LGBTQ plus movement, are badly missing out. Well, what do you know? All of a sudden, the inclusive people want exclusivity. Did you get that? After all of these decades, they are the lesbians in particular, the lesbians in particular thinking that they were going to hurt the patriarchy. They spent decades now making sure that they had as big of a tent as possible. Because what they told themselves, here's the way the trick bag is supposed to work. The way the trick bag was supposed to work was that they told themselves, we're going to get this big tent and we're going to bring in all these other people. Ah, 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 but they'll be 
subservient to us. So the LGBTQ movement would simply be an extension of the feminist supremacist movement. And this would be used to extract and demand all sorts of unearned benefits. This would be used to extract and demand all sorts of unearned benefits. They thought it was going to work well, but it isn't. They thought, that's why you see them clearly saying in this article, well, the L is at the beginning of LGBTQ. I thought we were about inclusivity. Yeah, we're about inclusivity so long as we get the results that we want. So long as we get the results that we want. It goes on to say that in policymaking, the charity sector, academic sec research, data collection, media representation, and political attention, to name but a few areas, lesbians have fallen to the back of the queue. Well, I feel like Dave Chappelle. It's not that you're upset about the heist. You're just upset you didn't get the cut you thought you were going to get. It's not that you're upset that a crime got committed. You're just upset because you didn't get the cut of the theft that you thought you were going to get. Amazing. Now they're upset because the condition that they created, they're the ones who said, oh no, you have to acknowledge all these other orientations because this will destabilize the patriarchy. And I told you a decade ago, they're falling for a damn trick bag. They're falling for a trick bag. That when you bring in all these other groups, you will be lost. So I actually, I have always held that it was the traditional white male power structure that did what it usually does. When you start talking about exclusive benefits for yourself, they are going to demand to change the subject and tell you why, yeah, we need to do things for lesbians. Yeah, that's right, patriarchy. You need to do something for us, for lesbian women. Yes, and for gay men. Yeah, okay, fine, gay men. And bisexuals. Yeah, them too. And transsexuals because men can be women and trans men are women. You wouldn't want them to, you wouldn't want to leave them out now. Trans, they're not heterosexual men. As long as they're not heterosexual men, you're destabilizing the patriarchy, remember? So now trans women are women too. And for the last decade, the lesbians have been supporting that right up until they realized that the trans people took over the conversation. Right up until they realized them trans women those biological men who identify as women, they when they were like, oh, we're taking over the conversation. We are the women now. The lesbians are now jumping up. Hey, 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 we, we're, the re we're the real women. No, you haven't fallen to the back of the queue. You allowed yourself to get put in the back of the queue because you thought you were going to do heterosexual men in and you wound up doing yourself in. And don't worry, I'm going to bring this to heterosexual women. I got to give you, I got to read your mail. I got to read the mail. I got to read the mail tonight. I got to read your mail. They're going to say that pride is the emotion usually associated with the Rainbow Coalition. Really? And there are certainly many historic achievements for LGBTQ plus activists to feel proud of. Still, not much attention has been paid to the question of how well the interests of distinct member groups are identified and prioritized once they are under the rainbow umbrella. A lot of money, resources, and public attention flow into this sector. But how exactly are the spoils divided? So they are literally saying what Dave Chappelle said years ago that upset 
the heter- the homosexual movement that upset all of them. What he said years ago about feminism and all of this. Yeah, now it's coming to pass. It's exactly what we said over a decade ago. I said over a decade ago. Dave said, said a couple of years ago. Now they're all, yeah, we thought we were going to use this big coalition as a bludgeon and we were going to demand benefits from the patriarchy and get men to work as indentured servant servants to support them and what the biological women who thought they were going to lock arms with all these other people that they were going to use the gb gbtq plus ia lmnop to sit up here and get benefits for them that's what they thought they were going to do that they were going to corral this huge rabble, this huge disorganized rabble, and they were going to corral them together and then focus their energies. And then when they focused them as a cohesive movement, that they would ultimately steer them in the direction of giving preferential treatment to biological women who identify as lesbian, but the biological women would still get that chivalry and preferential treatment. And everybody else would be in their movement would be second class citizens and they'd be all right with it. And what they found out is once you open up the door, you got bum rushed. Now you have become passengers at the back of the bus that you built. You are now passengers sitting in the back of the bus that you yourself built. If you all agree with what I'm saying here tonight, give me the thumbs up emoji in the chat room and hit the likes button. It's almost 2,000 people in here tonight. So if you want to deal with the guy who deals in facts and figures, data and analysis, not hyperbole and what you wish, I don't sit up here and give you dream talk. I bring you the numbers and the evidence from around the world of exactly what's happening. So hit the likes button for me. It's almost 2,000 people. Let's let folks know that you agree with what you're hearing here. So they're asking, how exactly are the spoils divided? Now, folks, when we talk about spoils, that means concrete tangibles. That doesn't mean, quote, unquote, social acceptance. It means, hey, who's going to break bread? Who's going to break bread? That's why they said in policymaking, that's laws. Laws to do what? Break bread. The charity sector. Charity ain't nothing but free money. Academic research, oops, jobs, data collection, mo jobs, media representation, oh hell, big jobs in front of the camera, and political attention, oh, free laws, grants, loans, benefits. So what they said here is that lesbians have fallen to the back of the queue. Those are the spoils they're talking about dividing. Now, it goes on to say here, in early 2022, my friend, Julie Bindel, the feminist campaigner and journalist asked me to think about forming a new organization with her dedicated to the understanding and enhancement of lesbian lives in the UK. I jumped at the chance. I had just left my academic job under difficult circumstances. So in other words, all of these women, ladies, I got call it for what it is. All these women who went off and got useless degrees. They got suckered into leaving the home, coming into the workforce under the assumption that they would be somehow competing against at best and displacing at worst the men who have been protector and provider. Now they've all gone off and got a bunch of useless degrees because you see, women don't want degrees that require manual labor or they don't want occupations that require manual labor. They want a job where they can sit in the cool air conditioning on plush rugs at a computer desk somewhere and only have to show up half of the days out of the year. Now that's what they want. So you see all these other jobs that require manual labor, the pipe trades, the skilled trades, they don't want any of those. Well, that leaves you with a bunch of silly ass, you know, um, fine arts degrees, liberal arts degrees, psychology degrees. We're going to get to that tonight. So you've got this battalion, a whole generation of females who've gone to college to get worthless psychology degrees. 
absolutely worthless. And the only thing that a psychology PhD is good for is qualifying you to teach a psychology class for future PhDs, but it doesn't qualify you for anything of use in the real world, which is why you always hear them mentioning themselves as perpetual students. So this woman here, I left my academic job. Yeah, because that's the only thing you could get. And she says she left it under difficult circumstances. It's always under difficult circumstances because the money ain't never going to be right. Never. By the way, my likes are not where they need to be, so I'm probably going to wrap things up early tonight since apparently the ladies don't like what I'm saying. The ladies don't like me telling the truth about this, so ladies, I'm not here to massage busted, bruised egos. We got to tell the truth about what's happening here. That you got running, if you if you are a female listening to the sound of my voice tonight and you are working or worse, you got kids and you're working, you fell for the trick bag. And if you tell the truth, you will admit that, yeah, you thought you were undermining men. You thought you were going to, ain't no man going to tell me what to do and I'll do it myself. And now take a look at what you got. So if it's hurting feelings, it's not my fault. Goes on to say here, she said, I jumped at the chance. I had just left my academic job under difficult circumstances. Whatever I ended up doing, I knew I wanted to be able to keep speaking my mind about what mattered most to me. And one thing that mattered a lot was being a lesbian. So she's saying that she left, she had a job in academia and she left it. And she said, I didn't know what else I wanted to do for a living, but I knew what I want to do for a living is to talk about being a lesbian. Now, people, I can tell you what a car mechanic contributes to a nation. I can tell you what a diesel mechanic contributes to a nation. I can tell you what a doctor, what an engineer, what an IT specialist what a biologist contributes to a nation. Can someone explain to me what in the hip hop holy hell this woman wanting to talk about being a lesbian contributes to a nation? How is that a contribution to a nation? So she's gone, as I said, she's gone way past, I don't want to work. She doesn't even want to do anything of value. She just wants to sit around and whine about being a lesbian could you imagine porn stars i just want to sit around and talk about being a porn star nobody's gonna pay you for that Ooh, you better give me some government grants and loans and some charity money so i can tell you all the virtues of me being a lesbian and that will be my contribution to society now she said this next i had come out relatively late at the end of my 30s this was the defining moment of my life really this was the defining moment of your life. You, had, you didn't have very much of a life if that was the defining moment of it. She didn't say something like getting a degree. She didn't say that. She didn't say honoring her parents. She didn't say that. She said coming out of the closet was the defining moment of my life. I submit to you that you haven't had much of a life if that's the defining moment of it, but okay. Changing everything in it for the better and sprinkling the world around me with technicolor magic. Lady, you don't actually have anything of value to contribute to the world except a bunch of flowery words. She goes on to say, I grabbed the label lesbian with both hands, viewing it as physically connecting me with a world of exciting, bold, brave female adventurers and warriors before me, proudly doing their own special thing. People, what adventures do lesbians go on? Somebody... Oh, but when I open up the phone lines, I want some lesbians to call me up and explain to me the adventures that you all go on and, and, and your, your adventures and warriors. I, I want to know what your adventures are. What are the, what are the adventures and what are the wars? Cause I, I guess in her mind, this is what happens when you've got a degree and access to psychotropic drugs. I imagine yeah, because she's describing the island of Themyscira. For those of you who don't know Wonder Woman, she's describing the island of Themyscira. That's what she's describing. You can't get women to join the military. 
in a combat capacity. Women don't want to go into combat. And she's talking about adventurers and warriors. What are they warring against? Where's the warring there? Then she wonders why it is that the trans women were able to overtake them. She goes on to say, but when I looked around me, I was disheartened to see that other lesbians. Now listen to this next part of the sentence, because this is going to be a theme that you're going to hear tonight. I was disheartened to see that other lesbians and particularly younger ones didn't feel the same. So in other words, what she's saying is that the next generation of females are not really signing up for her lesbian, feminist, academic lifestyle agenda. That's what she's saying. The next generation is not seeing the world the way she is. She goes on to say, I already knew from living in Brighton that the once vibrant lesbian only social scene of the 80s and 90s had all but disappeared with few opportunities for young lesbians to meet each other separately. I also get, well, you want to turn it into one big gay bar. So guess what? You invited all these other people in saying we are the foot soldiers in the war. I guess that's the war you're referring to against patriarchy. Now here you are. The social scene of the 80s and uh, the vibrant, once vibrant lesbian only social scene of the 80s and 90s had all but disappeared with few opportunities for young lesbians to meet each other separately. I also knew from teaching days that a stigma surrounded the word lesbian among young people. I had heard from those expressing distaste for the L word seeming as it did to them to carry a hint of unkindness and exclusion about it, or else putting them uncomfortably in mind of a porn search. So in other words, what she's saying is that lesbians are seen as very brutish, very impolite, hostile, uncomfortable to be around individuals. That's what she's saying. That even among lesbians, young lesbians don't want to be called that because lesbians are seen as very uncomfortable to be around, very brutish. That's what she doesn't want to say. But that's what they're telling you. That lesbians are seen as being unkind exclusionary oh yeah and what is she now asking to be exclusionary i don't want all these other letters of the rainbow alphabet around we want something for just lesbians so oh yeah she's actually proving it right no see when you get when you sit up here and make inclusiveness your mantra you gotta hold this l or don't all right she goes on to say, for most of those students, I would still think of in my old fashioned way as same sex attracted females. The word lesbian had been replaced by terms that were vaguer and more deniable words that could be shared with the male sex like queer or bisexual or non-binary or trans. Well, hell, Miss Academic Lesbian, you're the one who invited all these other classifications into the room because you thought you were using a sniper rifle to shoot at men, and then you woke up one day and realized that wasn't a sniper rifle, it was a grenade. And you're in a bedroom, not an open field. If you throw the grenade, you blow yourself up. It's not a sniper rifle. You allowed them all in. Now you're complaining that you allowed them in and they done X'd you out. Now you're upset that you brought these people in. You said that trans men were men. 
You and your cohorts are the ones who said that trans men are men. Now you're trying to put the toothpaste back in the tube. After you said that trans men are men. Now you want to say, wait, wait, wait. Now, no, you said that trans men are men and trans women are women. Now you want to say that trans women aren't women anymore. Not really. They certainly don't qualify to be lesbian. But you're the one who said they are women. You can't call anything else is dead naming them. Anything else is dead naming. You can't do that. Now they didn't come to X you out. And wait, 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 wait. Now, hold on a second. I, there's no benefits for me. They're getting all the benefits. Well, yeah, they're women too. No, he's not. Take a look between his legs. That's obviously not a woman. O of course it is. No, it isn't. So the very people who started this fiasco are now saying, wait a minute now, can we get a do-over? She goes on to say, still, I was unprepared for the disheartening picture that emerged as I started to look further into the brief Juliet sent me. In social scientific research, for instance, information about lesbians is rarely disaggregated from wider groupings. So in other words, they lump data about lesbians in with GQBTIA and everybody else. So they're just saying you're all just, you all remember when Ice-T said the problem with white society is that with black folk, we all just one big nigga. Remember that? I see said white society doesn't see black folk. They don't, they don't care about how much money you have. As far as they're concerned, you're all just, we're all just one big nigga. Now she's complaining because they're all seen as just one big non-heterosexual group. You're just one big non-straight group. There's straight and then there's everything else and now you're all just one big group and you demanded this when you allowed them to piggyback gbq to h i j k you 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 created it now you're complaining an academic who started this complaining about the frankenstein monster that she built hold this l She goes on to say, in the academic humanities, well, all right, liberal arts, I told you. In the academic humanities, meanwhile, things are even worse. Oh, really? Do tell. The postmodern idea persists there that, the postmodern idea persists there that sexual orientation categories such as lesbian, are wholly invented through language, tending to reinforce hidden power relations, keeping some inside and some outside a group. Instead of treating lesbian as a straightforward term for a distinctive group of women, academics tend to treat it as referring to a culturally and historically relevant phenomenon which should be made more exclusive in the name of social justice. Enter lesbians with male biology. Folks, did you think you'd be reading this from your lesbian academics in your lifetime? That they're already throwing up their hands and conceding defeat. That bringing in by a lot, they're making an argument against including biological men. But they will then turn around tomorrow and tell the rest of society, you can't exclude trans women, biological men. You can't do that. But when it's time to divide up the money, when it's time to divide up the resources, then she says, wait a minute, ain't nothing like the real thing. We don't need biological males. So now she wants to be inclusive. Ladies, Women love having it both ways. They love trying to have it both ways. They want it to be a big tent, LGBTQIA, plus, minus, divided, multiplied. Women love it. They love inclusiveness when it benefits them. So they want to preach inclusiveness when it benefits them. And they want to deny it when it doesn't. I want inclusivity when it helps me. Okay, fine. 
I want inclusivity. All right, everybody's included. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. Hold on. You, you, you tipped the table too far. Man. I need it to benefit me now. Too much inclusiveness. Too much. Now you got a bunch of caddy females sitting around with each other trying to argue over who's going to get the biggest piece of the pie. Now she goes on to say, in practice, all of this vagueness about who exactly is being talked about means that there are big decisions about contemporary lesbian life that we just don't know much about. The data is not good enough. How do lesbians feature in the UK labor market? How are they faring in same-sex marriages and civil partnerships? How does the lesbian experience of motherhood differ from the heterosexual one? Didn't you already have that figured out, ma'am? What are lesbians' specific health needs? What? 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 These are just a few of the big questions we have relatively little reliable information about. What information is out there, meanwhile, is often highly ideological and produced or funded by activists with certain strategic goals in mind. Across LGBTQ plus academia, there is a dearth. Look it up. There is a low amount of methodolo methodologically sound or free-ranging inquiry. And then there's the LGBTQ plus charity sector. Like I said, it's going to come down to the money. So, by the way, the article is almost over. We're coming to the end of the article. This is the second to the last paragraph in the article. And now we get to this. She went through all that talk to get to this part. And then there's the LGBTQ plus charity sector. Despite some high profile lesbians leading mainstream organizations over the past several years, in practice, campaigning energies have rarely been directed towards the interests of lesbians in particular. Dedicated funding for lesbian only projects is now vanishingly rare. Dedicated funding for lesbian-only projects is now vanishingly rare, which means that information about lesbian needs is reduced. The word lesbian is fast disappearing from the LGBTQ plus charity annual reports. While other identity terms are in the ascendancy. Isn't this natural selection? Isn't this just Darwinism? Boy, I'm telling you, these folks hate biology. Except when it benefits them. But they sure do hate biology. Natural selection is biology, isn't it? Isn't natural selection biology? All right. All right. The word lesbian is fast disappearing from LGBTQ plus charity annual reports while other identity terms are in the ascendancy and government equalities bodies are not much better. Initiatives in the name of LGBTQ plus people don't tend to record data about sex so that once again, lesbians disappear as a group with interests in their own right. Okay, but you can't say we don't want to acknowledge biological sex for heterosexuals and then say, but wait a minute, for us lesbians, you need to identify it for us. You can't say that biological sex doesn't matter. You folks have been spending 25 years trying to hammer through people's heads that biological sex doesn't matter. You didn't do the math to follow this through to its natural logical conclusion of where you would end up at because you told yourselves that you would be the only people trying to exploit and capitalize on this. And then you found out, oh, there's a never ending stream of biological men who didn't make it as biological men who say, you know what? Let me see if being a broad will work out for me. Let me see if that'll work out for me. And you never thought that would happen. See, what happened to their little movement is they told themselves that masculinity was an absolute. 
and that you would never have a significant portion of biological males who would willingly put on a dress and challenge women for preferential treatment as women. They figured men will always want to be biological men. Now that they're finding out that that's not true. There's a bunch of males out there that if being a male don't work, he'd be like, hey, let me try these high heels on. Let me see if that works out for me. Now she's saying, wait, 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 wait now. Biological sex. Wait, wait now. She goes on to say, this then is the work of the lesbian project to put lesbian needs and interests back into focus. What she means is back at the forefront. Because she couldn't make it as a real academic with any type of useful skill in life. So now she's like, hey, I need you to put lesbian needs on the front burner. So she doesn't mean back into focus. She means back in the forefront. To stop lesbians disappearing into the rainbow soup, ladies and gentlemen. uh, Trans ladies and trans gentlemen as well. This is the beginning of of an LGBTQISUV civil war. Here we go. It's jumping off. This government surplus charity bowl ain't big enough for all of us. So now they're saying we want to vote some people off the island. They're now openly saying it. We want to vote some people off the island. We're not getting the benefits. We, we're not getting as big of a slice of the pie as we thought. We're not getting preferential treatment. This LGBTQ thing is supposed to give the L preferential treatment. We ain't getting it. Man, let the scrap begin. Y'all got to get out of here. Damn you. Now they're going to start saying that trans women are biological men. Oh, wait a minute. That's literally what she just said in this article. So in other words, trans women are not deserving of so much support because they're actually biological men. Once again, they didn't think this strategy through when they started it 45 years ago and they're not thinking it through now. They're not thinking it through now. Now it says, this then is the work of the lesbian project to put lesbian needs and interests back in the focus to stop lesbians disappearing into the rainbow soup and to give them a nonpartisan political voice. Same sex attractive females are not going anywhere. Uh, According to you, ma'am, they are. According to your article you just wrote, they are, but okay. Same-sex attractive females not going anywhere, but public understanding of them is disappearing, and younger lesbians in particular are paying the price. However they identify and whatever they call themselves. We think our task is urgent. We are keen to get started. Kathleen Stock is a philosopher and writer. So you got a chick who doesn't have any actual practical, applicable skills in the real world. She's a failed academic who writes articles about give me free stuff because I'm lesbian. Now she's upset talking about, and by the way, did you see the hostility in that last line? But public understanding of them is disappearing and younger lesbians in particular are paying the price. However, they identify and whatever they call themselves. In other words, young lesbians do not have the right to decide whether or not things are okay as they are. These old bags who missed their chance at succeeding in life are now saying, hey, we want we don't care what the young lesbians think. We want things to stay the way we want it. The feminist movement is self-destructing in front of your eyes. The civil war in the LGBTQIA plus movement is emerging in front of your eyes. They fell for the trick bag of allowing biological men into the room because they thought that that was going to destabilize heterosexual men. And what they found out was all you were doing was you were letting in your doom in the front door, but it will not leave that way. As the wizard said in the last unicorn, you told yourself that this would be getting heterosexual men up off the block and this would dominate them. Now you're sitting here screaming for help. 
Now you're screaming for help. You ain't gonna get the trans people out the paint now. The bisexuals, the trans, the the uh, cross dress. You ain't gonna get them out the paint now. That's it. You told them that biology and sex don't matter. You said however you feel about yourself, that's what matters. Hell, you've had it written into law in many of these places. It's too late now. It's too late now. Ain't gonna work. It's not gonna work. That's a done deal. You're not going to be able to walk this one backwards. You're not going to be able to walk it backwards. They're in trouble, man. They're in trouble. They're upset as hell. The wheels are coming off the wagon. They ain't liking it. They're not liking it because it's bad. It's bad. And it's getting worse. It's bad. It is bad. And it is getting worse. Here's an article here, and once again, this actually deals with it from a global perspective here, but there was a study that was done by Ipsos UK. They claim that they did some polling around the world. Take a look at the results of their survey, if you hadn't seen that. Gen Z and millennials think women's rights have gone too far, according to a new survey. It says a surprising number of people in younger generations believe that women's rights have gone too far with a new survey revealing gender equality progress could be at risk of stalling. Progress, they've already got dominance. You go into a courtroom, they got dominance. A woman wants to call the police and make a false allegation. She has dominance at your job. She wants to make a false allegation against a man. She's got dominance. They fought to get all of the benefits and none of the responsibilities of adulthood. They've already got dominance and they're saying progress could risk of stalling. No, what they're saying is our grip, our iron grip on dominance is starting to fail. New research conducted by Ipsos UK and Global Institute for Women's Leadership at King's College London found that over half of people in younger generations believe the push for equality is now negatively impacting men, you don't say! From the water is wet files, and that they are being, ex and that men are being expected to do too much to support progress. The survey collated the responses of more than 22,500 people aged 16 to 74 across 32 countries, including approximately 1,000 people from Australia. According to the results, 52% of Gen Z and 53% of millennials agree that, quote, we have gone so far in promoting women's equality that we are discriminating against men. This is compared, now listen to this next part, that was 52% of Gen Z, 53% of millennials. That is compared to 46% of Gen X and 40% of baby boomers. So in other words, the sucker ass simps of the baby boomer generation, and let me just be very, very clear about this. The reason that the baby boomer generation is such a sniveling group of cowards, and they always have been, they've been this just disgusting group of cowards, Primarily, and I'm going to say this, the males. Baby boomers are beta males. Those guys came from a time when the middle class was in its ascendancy. And these fellows would do anything, anything to get female attention. They would accept any circumstances, they would tolerate any burdens. They were the desperate simp generation. That was why they tried to pressure the next generations into buying into what they did. But let's be very, very clear. The baby boomer generation males, they were all losers. They wasn't winning. The guys who were winning were few and far between. They were all losers for the most part. They didn't just marry single moms. They created them. They didn't just marry them. They created them. 
didn't elevate anything. These were guys who worked at the plant, worked at Boeing, didn't have to worry about child support because at the time the laws, it wasn't a felony to be a deadbeat dad at the time. Try it now. But let's be very, very clear. These old dudes from the baby boomer generation, those were nothing but feckless simps and their dating strategy was happy wife, happy life. So he didn't say he had to be happy. It's happy wife, happy life. The baby boomer generation of males, those were the males who started the practice of ridiculing men on television, of women getting on television and making fun of men and ridiculing them. Let me take you all back. Let me put you in the way back machine. For those of you who remember the comedian Jackie Gleason, if you saw the Smokey and the Bandit movies, you remember Jackie Gleason. I want to say he was in the Richard Pryor movie Toys, was it? But if you remember Jackie Gleason, Hollywood icon. But remember, Jackie Gleason got his start where? He got his start on an old black and white TV show called The Honeymooners. I see there are some folks in here who are old enough, or at least there's been some television station out there, someone that showed you The Honeymooners. Ralph Cramden and his wife, who made fun of him, ridiculed him, mocked him, denigrated him. The most standing up for himself he did was say, to the moon, Alice, that woman sat there and made a monkey of him. Remember when she acted like she pretend, pretended to be hypnotized one time and um, they asked her what she thought and she said, I don't want him. You can have him. He's too fat for me. She was re re ruthless and relentless in her ridicule of him. She was ruthless and relentless in her ridiculing him. And she wasn't the only one that became a thing. George Jefferson. Y'all don't want me to start this. You don't want me to start this. You'll realize when you talk about TV programming, we could sit here and essentially just start naming off the shows. Mary Tyler Moore. We can just keep naming off the shows if you want us to. The Flintstones, which is just a cartoon version of the Honeymooners, yes. We can go down the list. You can go down the list. The only person who halfway stood up for himself on a regular basis was Fred Sanford, and he was a junk man. But other than that, the fellas sat around. The fellas, the males, became the butt of every joke. Married with children, I love Lucy, yes, we can go down the list. The men were not just in on the jokes. They were the butt of the jokes. And the fellas from that generation were like, well, hell, if acting subservient to women and letting them mock us and make asses of us, well, if that's what it takes to make the women happy with me, so be it. You want to know why it is that Harvey Weinstein... Do I need to say Bill Cosby? It was a whole bunch of fellas from that era who sat up here giving men a hard time and singing the virtues of the females. And then you find out behind the scenes, these guys were just the most unscrupulous skirt chasers you ever met. So it explained why they were giving men such a hard damn time with no balance. They expected everything in the males and nothing in the females, even though it was obvious the females were messed up. So they didn't want to do that. They didn't want to do that because they thought that they were stacking it deep and selling it cheap for themselves. Yeah, John Amos wasn't no beta male. So on good times, John Amos wasn't no beta male. They had to kick him off the show because he wasn't going to be beta. But the others, they had no problem with that. Family matters. We can go down the list. Family matters. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. We can go down the list. We can go down the list. The baby boomer generation, the civil rights generation males, their dating strategy was kiss women's asses. That was their dating strategy. 
now that their sons and grandsons have grown up and said, yeah, I don't really think my lips are made to be wrapped around a woman's rump. There's something wrong with y'all. Okay, Boomer. Okay. But yeah, it shouldn't surprise you that 53% of millennials and Gen Z say that this has gone too far discriminating against men. 46% of Gen Z, but only 40% of baby boomers. Yeah, because in their mind, first of all, let's be clear. For most of them are so old today that they can't do nothing with a woman except look at her or avoid her. But they want their world order to stay in place even though it failed. Even though it failed. They still want to have their way, even though their way failed. They're going to say here that, in fact, many of the questions show that younger generations were less supportive of efforts to advance gender equality than boomers. Now, you got to understand the way this article is written. This article came from news.com.au, and it was written by this really, uh, this really feckless radical man hating feminist. So they took the they took the survey and said, "Oh, this is a survey about." People are scared to speak up for equality. Women today don't have equality. Women today have dominance and preferential treatment. You never saw a female who was afraid to walk into a family court. You never saw a female who was afraid to walk into a child support court. You never saw a female who was afraid to walk into a human resources meeting. You never saw a female who was afraid to stand in front of police. You never saw it because, yeah, they know they run it. So when they use this type of deceptive lying language, they're doing it for a reason. It says for Australia, 51% strongly or somewhat agreed with the above statement compared to 41% who disagreed with 60% of those who agreed men. When it came to the claim that things have quote gone too far in giving women equal rights with men, equal rights. So the way they're wording this is just criminal. 55% of Gen Z and 57% of millennials agreed. This is compared with 53% of Gen X and 47% of boomers. There were more Australians who disagreed with this comment than agreed, but a higher percentage of men agreed over women. The majority of Gen Z, millennial, and Gen X Respondents also agreed that men are, quote, expected to do too much to support equality with 55%, 57%, and 54% respectively. However, less than half of boomers agreed with this statement. For Australia, 42% somewhat or strongly agreed and 46% somewhat or strongly disagreed. When breaking the results down further, it was revealed 50% of Australian men agreed with the statement compared to just 36% of women. So folks, feminism is breaking down. It is self-destructing. They thought they were going to use the LGBTQ movement. It ain't working. They thought they were going to use the unequal rights movement. It ain't working. And when you take a look at it, there's a reason why. There's another article from the New York Post. And this is going to bring it full circle to what I said at the beginning of the hour. This is Joan Collins. She might be a little bit old for some of you here, but this is Joan Collins. She said women's freedoms are being eroded by political correctness. Now, Joan's been talking about this for a minute now, but she says Joan Collins is all about breastfeeding, not chest feeding. In celebration of International Women's Day on March 8th, the Golden Globe winner of Dynasty fame, that was an old soap opera that showed at night on ABC, for those of you who don't remember, The Golden Globe winner of Dynasty fame published an impassioned piece for The Independent, spotlighting the dangers she feels gender-inclusive language or politically correct stealth poses to women's rights. Well, what do you know? That sounds strikingly familiar to something else I heard tonight. Nobody wants to be inclusive anymore on the double X chromosome side. All of a sudden, they're now arguing biology, not ideology. 
They're now all arguing biology. Now, where did I hear that from earlier tonight? I don't know where. Can't remember. If it comes back to me, though, I'll let you all know. Joan Collins says, quote, it worries me that we might be inadvertently subjugated with the censure of female only spaces or words like mother and breastfeeding and told we must use terms like female parent and chest feeding instead. Collins 89 pinned in her open letter. We must beware that we are not being kicked back into inequality by politically correct stealth, the self-purported lifelong feminist insisted. Aren't you supposed to just accept that? Why why, why are you calling her self-purported? You're at odds with it? You disagree? You're in conflict? How can you dispute her? If she says she's a feminist, she's a feminist. And with the awareness that International Women's Day puts into acceptable feminism, I truly hope that this will never happen. Now, you all got to understand, Joan Collins, at 89 years old, she comes from a different era. She comes from the era where men paid her way and paid her way handsomely. For those of you who are not old enough to remember when she was on TV in the world of soap operas, she was one of their favorites. I guess she would have been their version of a smoke show back then. Joan Collins got all those benefits. Men laid out the red carpet everywhere she went. She didn't have to worry about a damn thing. She comes from a generation where men paid her way. I'm not talking about at a low level. They paid her way at the highest level. She got all those benefits. She ain't looking and was never looking to join the workforce and get out there and scrap it with men. She's like, I'll be damned. They bringing it to me. Why I got to go work for it? They bringing it. So I'm bringing this not 360 degrees, but 720 degrees so that I bring you back to this. This picture encapsulates why feminism doesn't work first let's be very very clear by the way all feminism is female supremacy first wave second wave third wave sound wave there's no such thing as a non-anti-male feminism yeah i know i know some of your earlier folks on the internet told you something different that was untrue There is no wave of feminism that has been a good one or an honorable one. They've all had the same goal. Turning men into a subservient worker class that will sit up here and give unearned benefits to women we're not even married to or in a relationship with. That men will simply earn the benefits and in effect all women of the society will have a wife. All men will be married to all the women of the society. You'll be obligated to support them, even if they have utter hatred and contempt for you. That brings me to this picture right here. Now, I don't really want to say names. I will just say I got it from Instagram. Her name is uh, Claudia Prezier. It's spelled that way, I think, P-R-E-S-S-U-E-R-E or something like that. Claudia Prezier or Claudia Prezier. And... I saw this picture because Instagram just throws stuff at you. But I saw this picture. And this picture encapsulates 100 million percent the reason that feminism cannot work. Because this picture you all see in front of you, this encapsulates female aspirations in a nutshell. This picture is everything. This is everything that every female wants. This is everything that every female is aspiring to. This is it. Let me explain to you why. First and foremost, you have a very lovely lady who is in very good shape. I'd give her at least a hard eight. If not a 10, I'd give her at least a hard eight. She is young-ish. She is in good physical condition. She is extremely easy on the eyes. But if you take a look at this picture, what is this picture trying to communicate to you? It's trying to communicate to you that she's on the move. 
she's getting things done and that she's living an, a, a fast paced life. That car behind her, for those of you who don't know, um, I believe, I'm pretty sure I'm right about this. That's an Aston Martin Vantage Roadster. That's an Aston Martin Vantage. So she's standing in front, she's walking in front of this Aston Martin Vantage. She's living this jet set life, or at least that's the image it's supposed to give. Now, just to put this in context for you all, Aston Martin Vantages start right now, they're starting at $200,000 and up. They're starting at 200000 and up. So you can see she's dressed to the nines. She looks good. She's in front of this ex extremely expensive car, sitting there on her iPhone. So she's communicating that she's getting things done. But in reality, not so much. Now, some folks may not like what I'm going to do next. But in the interest of honesty in society, I find this to be necessary. These are the two pictures that Miss Pressure posted. One is her seemingly walking from this Aston Martin Vantage. And the other one is her seemingly standing right by it. I say seemingly because we don't know if it's, don't know who belongs to him. Ready to bet dollars to donuts is not hers, not hating on anything. What I'm saying is that you're pr promoting an image and perpetuating an image. And other females are going to try to live this image or at least, and here's what men run into, they are going to attempt to insist on the image that you are portraying and promoting. Because it looks great. Well, let's deal with a couple of things here. No offense Miss Pressure, no offense. I want to ask a question of the ladies, because this is a question I had. Something struck me as odd. Can any of you identify this handbag? I'm zooming way in on it because I want you to get a good look at it. Can any of you identify this handbag? Because she's sitting on a $1,000 cell phone. She's standing in front of a $200,000 car. But I'm looking at that handbag. And I got to say, I want you all to do some work and look into that handbag. Because I tried to identify it myself. Yeah, yeah. I, I tried to identify it myself. And I know what you would think it is at a glance, but I went trying to find a Birkin that I could compare it to exactly. Now, I'm not going to say that it 100% isn't one, but I went looking to see if I could find a Birkin that it compared to exactly and couldn't really do that. Because it was obvious to me what they were trying to pass it off as. But I went looking to say, okay, well, which one is it? I can see what you want us to think it is, but which one is it? I don't know. You all can look it up for yourselves. That's why I'm showing it to you. I'm showing it to you now. You can go look it up for yourselves. And see what you find. But by the way, I spent some time looking myself. And I couldn't exactly find this type of alligator print for it. I couldn't exactly find that. Couldn't exactly find it. So if any of you can, let me know. Let me know. But I went looking for it. I went looking for it because if you're going to live that life, I want to find out what it is. I want to find out what it is. Now, she's got a little bit of a following on Instagram. That's fine. That's great. That's wonderful. But the issue here is that feminism cannot support this. Feminism doesn't support this. 
Feminism doesn't do this. That's the issue. Feminism doesn't do this. The government is never, the reason that feminism can't work is because the government is never going to match what men will do for you voluntarily. That's the problem. It's never going to match what men are going to do for you voluntarily. But you want it. That's the issue. You want it. And that's not going to go away. Not now. Not ever. It's never going to go away. Men are the ones who set the price. Men are the ones who set the standard. And so if you don't have it, you may be forced to get out there and do whatever you can to give the impression that you have it. You might have to do that instead. And I'm not downing the young lady here, but what I am saying is that this image, let us be honest, this image on your screen, this is what women want. This is it 100,000%. They want to floss. They want to stunt. They want to be the center of attention. But they they want to look like they're doing something important while what they are doing is of absolutely no significance whatsoever. It's of no significance whatsoever. They want to look like they're doing big things, but they don't actually want to make it work. They don't actually want to accomplish anything. In other words, she wants an Aston Martin and she wants a Birkin or knockoff or whatever it is. She wants the cell phone, but she don't want to have to put in. She does not want to have to do $200,000 of work. People, can we be honest for just a moment here? Ladies, can we be honest? Will you please tell me where there's $200,000 of value on your screen right now? Please show me where there is two or three hundred thousand dollars of value being contributed to society right there. Is this supposed to be a million dollars worth of value? Tell me where, where there's a quarter of a million dollars of value on your screen. Tell me where there's $200,000 of actual concrete value sitting on your screen right now. Where is it? Where is the value? Tell me where it's at. Yeah, I see a cute young lady, but what I'm asking you is, uh, I didn't ask if she's cute. I'm saying, is that, is what she's doing, is what she's doing worth $200,000 in society at large? Is she contributing $200,000 of value? Yeah, you're standing in front of a Bentley, but I know what you're trying to communicate. You're trying to communicate that you and the Bentley are of similar value. Problem, I'm trying to figure out how you jumping up and down in some sclerotic thing with these cartoonish fat injections or whatever the man at the Michelin shop did to your rear end. I'm trying to figure out where there's $200,000 worth of value. I know what you're trying to make it look like, but I'm trying to figure out where there's $200,000 of value. Cause this chick here, she barely moving, but then she'll be standing in front of a Lamborghini next. So I'm asking a question. If you are going to attempt to present the impression that you and this Aston Martin are a match, that you and this Birkin, allegedly, reportedly, possibly, are a match, if you're going to insinuate that and imply that, then it's only fair that I ask you, where is $200,000 of value? Because you see, if you can't get the internet to go along with this cryptocurrency scheme, then you don't have it. 
There isn't anything that you are doing, contributing, creating that is producing $200,000 of value. And that's just for the car. Y'all can see that villa style housing behind her. If it's not just some villa hotel or something, we're talking about millions of dollars. And you mean to tell me, take a look at that picture on the left. That picture on the left simply screams, look at how valuable I am. I got it. Okay, fine. I'm willing to go along with that. I'm just trying to figure out where is $200,000 of value. I'm asking a simple question. Where's $200,000 of value? Because you see, when it comes to men, we got to produce value. We don't get to just post a picture and be cute and tell people, well, can't you see? I got $200,000 of cuteness. Men don't get to do that. There's no one advocating that men even should get that. Nobody says that men should get that for value. Oh, you can be desired, but there's nobody. Women don't say that, yeah, a man's cuteness has a dollar value or that he should say, hey, y'all need to drop off the bag because I'm cute. Men have to produce something. Men have to produce something of value. Hell, not just of value. Men have to produce something of tremendous value and men got to show up every day to reconvince the market that it's still got the same value. That's the reason that feminism can't work. It can never work. Because at the end of the day, ladies, females are trying to figure out how to get maximum benefits ah, 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 with no physical labor involved. I didn't say a minimum of physical labor. That's why women love, when you ask women what their preferred profession is, they want to be a model. They want to go into the beauty industry. In other words, they just want to be given credit for waking up this morning and how do I look? Nothing that they ever say says, I want to do manual labor. I want to sweat. I want to have to wear deodorant. I want to have to get cuts on my hands. I want oil and dirt beneath my fingers. They don't say that. They want to get extraordinary benefits with zero, nada, none, nit, nay, nigh, not one bit of manual labor involved. And then you turn around and you've got these feminists telling you, you need to get up and work. So what you end up doing is because the men are no longer motivated because here's the problem, fellas, don't tell them the truth. The men no longer see $200,000 of value, so there's no longer a bidding war the way it used to be. The men no longer see 200000 300000 hell, $100,000 in value in the individual females anymore because the females become masculine and that's what brings your value down. When you become competitive against men, a disciplinary problem, rude, boorish, you start taking on masculine traits, that plummets your value. Men no longer see $200,000 of value. They just see a rather cute masculine figure on the screen, squawking into her cell phone and standing beside her car. Listen to me carefully. She's standing beside that car as if that car raises her feminine value. A woman's feminine value is supposed to be intrinsic when a, a man is supposed to have props because a man is supposed to give confirmation of his ability to produce. That's what works for men. That's what attracts women to men. A woman's ability to quote unquote produce does not attract men to her. Now, whether or not she's a problem and struggling is different, but her ability to produce does not attract men to her. You lose the power game. Feminism cannot work and feminism is failing and self-destructing. It's imploding on itself because you're telling the women that they got to work harder and that ain't going to happen for them. Go ahead and give you another picture. Oh, y'all are going to say I'm just evil tonight. 
These are two ladies here. They were at a uh, NBA game. I want to say it was the Hawks versus, I forget who it was, the Hawks, maybe in the Spurs. I'm not sure it was. Pretty sure I want to say it was the Hawks. I'm forgetting exactly who it was, but I couldn't help but notice something. They're at an NBA game. They were courtside. They wanted to show they were courtside. That's cute. And I couldn't help but notice. And I've never had a drink of alcohol in my life. Never had a drink of alcohol. But I couldn't help but notice uh, Michelob. Michelob. I mean, you tell me. Michelob. All right. Michelob. Is it just me? They sit in courtside NBA game, posting all kinds of pictures. And apparently got the Michelob on ice. So I'm not a beer drinker, malt liquor drinker. I'm not any of that. But I'm I'm just asking a question. I asked a question about the purse. Now I'm asking a question about the drink. And I'm I'm just saying to myself, I'm just saying to myself. Feminism can't succeed. And the reason that it can't succeed and it must fail is because women are never going to work as hard to reward themselves as men will. Women will work until there's a couple of beads of sweat. Then they're going to sit down. And she's going to be like, look, I wanted $200,000 I was only able to keep working till I got 40,000. How much can I get for this 40,000? How much can I get for this? They're not going to work that hard. Now, if a man, I want y'all to consider something. Could you imagine a man coming up to two women at an NBA game? He's got his swagger on. He's got his collar popped. He's sitting here walking. He's the man. He's the dude. He walks up to them and he throws it down in front of them. Sweet back to Mac. Throws down a big ass bucket of ice. Hey, ladies, I bought the drink sitting on ice. And he brings them a couple of bottles of Michelob. Now, I want you to think about that for a moment. If you think that I am exaggerating, if you think that I'm saying too much, if you think I'm presenting a problem, by the way, if it was a man who walked up to two, these two ladies and he slammed down a big bucket of Michelob on ice, Ray, in the chat room, you say women like Michelob because it's keto friendly. I guess you're just trying to get attention. Um, I meant what I said. Women don't give a damn about keto. When a man rolls up on, hey ladies, I'm looking out for your, I'm looking out for your calories. I, I, I heard that this will help with your caloric intake, and I heard that this will help with your metabolism. So, I, I, yeah, I could have brought you some Hennessy or Bacardi, but I, I, I brought you some Michelob. I, I'm looking out for you. Okay, Ray. All right. I guess you just want attention, but okay. All right. Show of hands in the chat room. Now, I'm a man who's never had a drink of alcohol, but ladies, if you had a dude who he saw you courtside at a Lakers game, courtside at a Spurs game, courtside at a Hawks game, and he came up to you with some Michelob on ice, and he told you, you know, you's a fine woman, I was just thinking about you, and he throws down the Michelob in front of you. If you would be impressed by that, give me the 
star emoji in the chat room. If you'd be impressed, give me the star emoji. If you would not give me the prohibited emoji, that's the circle with the red line through it. The red circle with the line through it. If you would be impressed, ladies, by you sitting courtside the NBA game and the fella throws down some Michelob on ice, you're like, oh, this is the man. Go ahead and give me the give me the uh, star emoji. But if you like, man, this fella is lame. Give me the prohibited emoji. Oh, hell. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Keto my ass. Keto my ass. There it is. Yeah, the lady said, not for me. Not today. Not for me. Yeah, now, fellas, we've covered this before in, on my Kendra G video. Now, if the ladies are buying it for themselves, man, look here. Women got a hard cap on what they will spend. Females have a hard cap. This is why feminism can't work because every woman knows that men will pay three or five or 10 times the price that a woman will pay for herself. If a woman has to buy a car for herself, she's going to go get her a Honda or an Altima or a Murano or a Kia. She's going to get something budget friendly. If a man is buying the car, she's going to say, we're going to break the bank. She's going to buy... Do you think if a man says she's going, he's going to buy the car, if it is a Hyundai, she's going to the Genesis dealership. If it is, she's going to the Genesis dealership. She ain't sitting over there with the regular ones. It's going to be at least a Genesis. If a man's got to pay for it. Oh, she's going to be like, Oh, wait a minute. The budget just went way up. The budget just went way up. If a man's going to foot the bill. Yeah. Let him carry that. Not me. Let him carry that. Not me. I ain't doing it. No, brother. It's not that you know ladies who are so... Uh, Ken Sale, I'm about to say, I don't know, brother. Now nah, that might be female. It's not so much that the women are, quote, cheap. It is that women want the finer, softer things, but the finer, softer things cost. And the finer it gets, the more it costs. And women have a threshold for exertion and labor. There's a certain amount of labor that women are going to put in. And if she realizes that she's just not a female who got it like that, where people are just going to throw money at her, if she realizes she doesn't have it like that, she's going to stop. She's going to stop. She's not going to put in any more labor. She's going to quit. She's done. Wow. In the chat room, I want everybody to go look at this heifer's page. Christina Powers in the chat room just said, this isn't worth anyone's time. Have a good night. Then you go take a look at her page. I can see why you don't like tonight's program. Oh, no, ma'am. You want to be famous? I'm going to make you famous right quick. I can see why you don't like tonight's program. Yeah, femininity ain't worked out for you at all. Yeah, femininity ain't worked out for you at all. It didn't work out for you, period. Yeah, everyone, it, it femininity did not work out for her at all. Looking like dewdrop. So she didn't she didn't like femininity at all. Listen, and nobody's offering to buy her a damn tricycle, much less an Aston Martin. What she say? I lost the femininity sweepstakes. Damn what Jason talking about. Damn him. It's not my fault you've lost the femininity sweepstakes. Go get your LGBTQ on. Don't sit over here complaining. There's a trans man somewhere willing to spend a little time with you. Don't get mad at me. Don't be a hater all your life. Don't be a hater all your life. 
Ladies, the bottom line is feminism cannot work. Feminism cannot work because feminism was presented to you. Feminism was presented to you with the promise that they were going to turn men into your man servants and that every male in society was going to begin adhering to feminist principles. That's what they promised. That if you just listen to them and follow their instructions, that's what it was going to be. And it was a trick bag because that isn't what happened because that can't be what happened. Because after they did all of that, they told you things were going to get easier and it didn't. You just entered the workforce. The government is trying to get women into the workforce. Take a look at all this encouraging women to go to college and get tons of degrees. So you end up being lifetime students with lifetime debt, which guarantees that you will have to work for an employer for the remainder of your days. You all know I've had female attorneys, plural attorneys, plural on my program who have still not paid off their college debts. They haven't paid off their school loans yet. Their attorneys, they make six figures. They haven't paid off their school loans yet. Yeah, they went to school. They came out with degrees and now they're going to work for the remainder of their days. Because guess what? Now they got you in a bigger trick bag. Once you start making over $80,000 a year, that's it. You can't claim poverty at all. So they're like, oh, you're going to have to hump it now. Okay, but it's going to take you a good decade and a half to get to that point right there, in which case men are no longer going to be interested in you and that, to that degree. You're going to have to be working now. You're going to be trapped working. So they're encouraging you all to go to school and get these college degrees stacked up to the ceiling. And then when you all come out, you have to come take some low level or lower middle class job. Because that's all you can do. Because the very women who taught you your professors, let me get a show of hands in the chat room. I want some evidence here tonight. I got a bunch of college educated women in my chat room tonight. Ladies, if your teacher in college, your professor in college, if your professor in college was making more than $200,000 a year, Give me the hand up emoji in the chat room. Not the thumbs up, the hand up emoji. If the discipline you took, your major, if you were being taught by somebody who was making $200,000 a year, give me the hand up emoji in the chat room. Georgia Rose, I'm going to have some questions about that. Because the thing is, if they're making that kind of money, why are they sitting in a classroom working for a school? Yikes. Yeah, before you start trying to cover yourselves about them useless degrees, by the way, then why are they sitting in a classroom working for a school? That doesn't even make sense. That doesn't make sense. Now, how many of the ladies listening to me right now, your professor or your teacher in your class, makes that you make as much or more money now even doing something else, by the way, than your college professor or college teacher did, that you make the same money or more money than them. If you do, give me the money bag emoji in the chat room. If you are a female with a degree, and right now you make the same amount of money as your professor or more money than your professor did than your college teacher did. Give me the money bag emoji in the chat room. There's a lesson to be learned here. There's a lesson to be learned. 
Now, here's the killing part about it. What that says is that all of y'all got to get out here and hump it for yourselves. You got to get out here and hump it for yourselves. Let me say something that nobody wants to talk about, but I'm going to say this just directly. There is nothing more miserable than a working woman. There is no such thing as a happy working woman. Working women are miserable. Because it's anathema to your being. A workplace environment demands strict competitiveness. Women don't like that. That kills it. That's why you got so many females today walking around in, 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 in house slippers at, at the grocery store. The femininity has been rolled out of them. She can't be soft and feminine when she's required to be in a competitive environment. A workplace is destruction. It is self-destruction to a woman's femininity. She can't focus on the things she needs to focus on. She can't focus on that. I sit up here and strap you to a job. There goes your ambitions and dreams. You can forget that. That's gone. No woman wants to be out here throwing elbows in the workforce. Why do you think they're the dominant force on social media? They don't want to be there. And feminism told you that's where you want to be. And a bunch of y'all fell for the trick bag. You're sitting up here fighting to be in an environment you don't even want to be in. Chasing pipe dreams of affluence that are simply impossible. Think this over for a minute. Do you know how much money you got to make to have a half million dollar house, an $800,000 house, and a $200,000 car? That's a million damn dollars. Do you know how much money you have to make to be able to actually afford that? The truth of the matter is you'd have to be making a million dollars a year to afford a million dollars worth of house plus car. No, you'd have to be making a million dollars a year. Anybody who lives in the state of Florida knows this. Anybody who lives in the state of California knows this. Anyone who lives in the state of New York knows this. Hell, anybody living in Dallas and Austin now, you know this too. Anybody living in Dallas and Austin now, you know this too. Anyone living in D.C., Anyone living in D.C., you can't have an $800,000 house and a $200,000 car and you making $250,000 a year. When you put all those numbers together, you can't do that. That's not going to work. Oh, no, don't get dropped off in, in a trick bag like Denver, Colorado. Don't get dropped off in that trick bag. Don't get dropped off in that. You're going to find out how far it doesn't go. Here's the issue. People who make, you know, $50,000 a year don't know what the tax burden is on someone who makes four hundred dollars or $500,000 a year. They don't know what the tax burden is. So unless you are self-employed, and most of them are not, but unless you're self-employed, you're not going to be able to dodge the taxes for the most part. So you got to pay the freight on the taxes, federal, state, and local. But somebody making $50,000 a year, you're thinking that the tax burden is going to be the same for you when you get to $400,000 or $500,000 a year. No, it's not. By the way, did you all hear Biden, President Biden right now wants to raise taxes on people who make $400,000 a year or more so that, so that they can pay to shore up Medicare, a service that they don't even use. You know why? Because the people on Medicare and Medicaid can't afford it. They can't afford to prop up the system. So all of y'all sitting up here thinking, well, I make $60,000, $70,000 a year. When my income quadruple, I'm going to have it set. 
it's, it's not going to work that way. We're, we're living in an era of hyperinflation right now. It's not going to work that way. That's a dream and a fantasy. You're sitting up here masturbating in your head. It won't work when you actually get to that point. Hell, first you got to get there because how many jobs, careers, or self-employment vocations do you have that allow you that? Now, I don't like asking this question in the chat room. I don't like asking this question to listeners because people routinely lie about it. They'll just lie and say they're making way more money than they're making. They'll just lie about it. Yeah, there's a good number of you who are my listeners, but you are exceptions in American society, but you make more than six figures a year. That's great. That number drops off precipitously when I say who makes $250,000 a year or more. That number falls off a cliff. It falls off a cliff. It falls off a cliff. Do you know how damn hard it is to make a hundred thousand dollars a year. All the feminists out there, these young women want to live a life of luxury and leisure. Let's get down to some brass tacks right quick. Do you know how hard it is to make a hundred thousand dollars a year? Do you know how damn hard that is? Now let's step it up since the pandemic. Folks, do you know how difficult it is to make 150,000? All I did was just say bump it up to 150. You would have to work your $100,000 a year job that's working your ass off and then you'd have to do overtime to get that 150 or take a second job. There goes having a life. What good is it to make that money and you have no life? Now, do you know how hard hard it is to make $200,000 a year. Gary Walker, you're correct. This is why the overwhelming majority of women, when you ask them about that, the first thing they say is, oh, let me get a man. How much does he make? When you tell the women they got to make $200,000 a year, she's like, wait, man, let me go find a dude, turn his ass upside down and shake him. Let me see how much he makes. Oh, we don't even want to talk about British pounds. You don't even want to talk about that. You don't even want to talk about that. In Britain, for you all, it's not $100,000. That conversion for you would be closer to 70 or 80,000 pounds a year. So six figures in America would be closer to 70, 80,000 pounds uh, in Britain. It'd be closer to that. And that's hard to get over there. That's hard to get over there. So it's worldwide. I'm not even talking about places like France and Spain, much less uh, the Southern Hemisphere of America or Africa. I'm not even talking about that. I'm just talking about the, the, the two main usual suspects. This is hard to do, man. I still up here and put that requirement on you, $200,000 a year. That's hard, man. It's easy to fantasize about that. Living it, that's hard. People, let me tell y'all right now. Welcome to the new damn world. Welcome to the new world. $100,000 a year is working class now. People, I don't know. I don't want to be the bearer of bad news. I'm going to break it to you. A hundred thousand dollars a year is working class. If you make in between 50,000 and a hundred thousand dollars a year, you're not going to experience a big change in your lifestyle. A hundred thousand dollars a year is working class. In the UK, 60 to 70,000 pounds a year is working class. 
70,000 pounds a year, you ain't balling out. You ain't starving, but 70,000, 80,000 pounds a year, you ain't balling. You're not suffering, but let's keep it real. You ain't balling. You're not going to go buy that new Bentley over there in Cruise, England. You're not going to pull up to the Bentley dealership sporting your 80,000 pounds a year. That's not happening. But Jason, you know, it's, it's very good life. Made a life of myself. We're doing better here. Huh? Oh, chum. Yes, I'm going down to the Rolls Royce dealership. I'm, I'm, I make 80,000 pounds a year. Man, look here. There's going to be so much laughter at the Rolls Royce dealership, at the Bentley dealership. Somebody's leaving in the car. It ain't going to be you. Do you know how damn hard that is? Do you know how damn hard that is? So what I'm saying is that we live in an era of fantasy. We live in an era of fantasy. No, $100,000 a year gives you a basic life in every metropolitan area in this country now in America. I ain't even going to talk about the UK. I won't, I won't even talk about that. $100,000 a year is working class. It used to be New York and LA were the worst offenders. $100,000 a year is working class. That's working class. But that's also working class, not just in New York and L.A., that's working class in D.C. Folks, rent in D.C. is over $2,000 a month, and I'm talking about out in Alexandria, Arlington, Fairfax, Tyson's Corner. I'm not talking about back towards the city toward the capital district rent in that DC Metroplex now is over two G's a month. Unless you're going to be living in a closet. Unless you're going to be living in a closet. It's over two G's a month. That's DC. Yes. And that's for a one bedroom. Yes. That's for a one bedroom. Not in the capital district in Miami. Nigga try four or 5,000. If you want a modest apartment, 2000 The closer your ass gets to Brickle, lights out. And by the way, that whole district is getting bigger. Go, You can go do a search on YouTube right now. I've talked about this before. Mega cities. Miami literally has something to the magnitude of $100 billion worth of construction that they want to do. Of premier construction work they want to do. So, Brickle was just the first. That was just the first. They're come. They can't go any further south into the bay or the ocean. They're coming back north now. They're coming back north. They're coming back north now. Oh no! They're gonna go all the way up to Hollywood and beyond. They're gonna go all the way up to Hollywood and beyond. That's it. It's off and going. It's off and going. A hundred thousand dollars a year. Please. Oh yeah. And one more thing. Florida is one of those places where they can jack up the rent at will. So when your lease expires, it is nothing. It's absolutely nothing in Florida today for when your lease expires for them to jack up the rent another eight hundred thousand dollars. That is nothing in Florida today. I didn't say Miami. I said Florida. That's nothing. Nothing. Come on over to Atlanta. My people in Atlanta, you already know what's going on there. Affordability, what's that? A decade ago when I was warning people, you know, y'all all gonna be stuck out and Marietta and Villa Rica, you know that's going to happen now. Ten years later, how'd that work out? How'd that work out? Ten years later, 
Where is everybody having to pile up at today in that Atlanta area? For those of you, if you've never been to Atlanta or you haven't driven it, use a ways out. Saying Villa Rica used to be, eh. Hey. Douglasville, hey. Folks that laugh at you back then. Now they're like, hey, let me see if I can give me some Villa Rica. Yeah, they laugh about Marietta because it's like, yeah, Marietta, they, oh, that's, that's, that's it right now. Yeah, and Marietta was already blown up. I told you what was going to happen. Marietta's done. Now you got to keep going. Now you got to keep going. That's it. Go fight for you some room in Cobb County. That's it. Yeah, you got to go all the way back up Interstate 20. $100,000 a year? Man, you forget about it. Forget about it. Yeah, Villa Rica is damn near Atlanta. Is damn, uh, is, yeah, but it's damn near Atlanta now. No, no, you're saying it's damn near Alabama? It's damn near Atlanta now. I guess maybe for those of you who, if you don't actually live out in that area, because every once in a while when I'm traveling the roads, because I got to travel a lot, I'll, I'll, I'll get caught on Interstate 20. Damn you, Google Navigator. I'll get caught on Interstate 20 coming through Villa Rica at 8 o'clock in the morning. It ain't nothing nice. I'll get caught coming through Villa Rica on I-20 at 8 o'clock in the morning. It ain't nothing nice. It ain't nothing nice coming through there. Traffic piled all the way back. It's tow all the way back. It's tow all the way back. And it's going everywhere. Nashville, Dallas, Austin, Houston. Houston is over damn priced. That doesn't make any sense. Houston is overpriced. Since when did the words luxury and Houston start to go together? That's the home of the ghetto boys. Since when did luxury and Houston start to go together? One goes to Sugarland. Chicago, on one side of town, you can get shot in front of a $500 crack house. On the other side of town, they're building damn me Lincoln Yards. Take this $11 billion development. $100,000 a year. Folks, listen to me, to the young people, young being under the age of 40. Ain't nobody building anything new for somebody making $100,000 a year or less. You better go talk to some of these developers and realtors. Ain't nobody trying to fool with you making $80,000 a year. Any of you trying to buy a house or think about buying one. They ain't really trying to fool with you. They're not trying to fool with you making $80,000 a year. They want someone making $150,000, That's who they're building all this new development for, all the new high-rises and condos. They're building it for them. They're not building it for you. They're not building it for you. So it's real entertaining to sit in style and profile in front of your, in front of the somebody's Aston Martin, because this is your ideal, this is your dream, this is your fantasy to be this fashion plate, and you're just this immaculate vision of femininity. And but at the same time, you somehow hustling and getting things done. You're going places, but at the same time, going nowhere because having to go someplace would be too much like work. So you're going places, but at the same time, not exerting yourself. And that is why feminism cannot succeed because there are too many women who are realizing now I'll be damned. Y'all had a trick bag. You just suckered me off into a bunch of work. You want me to be working as hard as the men. Yes, that's exactly what the idea was and is. To work as hard as the men. You gave away all your rights to the GBQTPS5. You gave away all your rights to them. 
and they're not sharing any power or resources with you. To the heterosexual females with your unresolved daddy issues, you thought the LGBTQ movement was going to help you punish men. Now you realize it's punishing you. Now you realize they're punishing you. That's the issue. That's the issue. And they're not liking it. However, you might feel differently. You might disagree. You might still think that your embracing feminism doesn't make you look clownish. You might think you're still winning. You might think that there's some pathway to victory because there sure as hell isn't a pathway to affluence. However, the telephone lines are now open. The number is 646-787-1933. That's 646-787-1933. Your personal access code to the program that all of your favorite YouTubers love to hate. This is the place where we do it. The telephone lines are now open. I'd like to thank everyone who has contributed to support tonight's program on PayPal, Cash App, Super Chat, Venmo. Thank you very much for your support. We appreciate that. I'm also going to go ahead and uh, open up Zoom. So let's go ahead and open up the Zoom for you all here. I'm going to go ahead and toss this link into the chat room. Folks love to wait until I start wrapping the program up to call in. Then they want to get mad and salty when I don't take calls after a certain time. So I got a new idea for you. How about you just call in earlier? How about that? Otherwise, can you really get upset? All right, let me go ahead and put this in the chat room there. The Zoom link is pinned to the top of the chat. Remember, we do give priority to Zoom callers. We do give priority to Zoom. So if you call on Zoom, you get put to the front of the line. Just need to make sure that you have your camera and your microphone on. If you're going to use Zoom, camera and microphone, if you want to speak audio only, you can go ahead and call the telephone number that's on your screen. The number is 646-787-1933. That's 646-787-1933. I want some of the ladies to call me up. Some of you ladies who are college educated, you got your degrees. I want to ask you a question. Is feminism working for you? To the ladies out there, there's some of y'all was sitting up here, you know, on the sneak, you know, on the slide when people aren't watching, you're sitting up here, big up in the LGBTQ. That's right. Get those men smash the patriarchy. Can some of you chicks be honest that you were some LGBTQ plus supporters because you thought those were your comrades in arms smashing the patriarchy? Can you call up and be honest for once in your life? Just one time be honest with yourself and say, eh, you know, yeah, I mean, my daddy issues kind of screwed me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was, I was, I was supporting them and they show as hell ain't supporting me. And then, then, yeah, that came back to bite me real bad. Jason came back to bite me real bad. Can you be honest enough with yourselves to admit that one? A little bit of tough love tonight. A little bit of tough love. A little bit of tough love, but this will be an opportunity for you to be honest. Get this off your chest while you still can. I'm going to go ahead and open up the telephone lines. The number is 646-787-1933. That's 646-787-1933. Let me get caller from area code 407. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, Jason. It's Shira. I'm in Orlando. All right, Shira from Orlando. What's on your mind? Well, I just wanted to say, Jason, it's really amazing how you just break this stuff down sometimes. Um, I am a working class woman. I make about $150,000 a year. And I hate my life. I have 
a million dollars in debt. And right now I'm dating a producer and I'm basically begging him to take me out of my misery. Okay. Back up here. How old are you again? I am 26. You're 26. And you are sitting Mm -hmm. under a million dollars of debt. Half a million, half a million. Okay, I'm about to say that. That million would have been very ambitious, but half a million dollars in debt. Mm -hmm. And how did you achieve this incredible feat at the tender young age of 26 years old? So I have a mortgage. It's 350000 I have a and what it, whoa, 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 slow it's, down, slow down. Okay, I got a mortgage for 350 Gs. And at uh, mm-hmm. at what interest rate? Um, whew, it's not pretty. Uh, 5.5%. You have a 5% interest rate. That's going to hurt. How long have you had that mortgage? Um, I just got it last year. Are you kidding me? You got it last mm-hmm. year. Tell me you didn't get it. Yeah. Please tell me you didn't get it within the last eight months. Please tell me that you got it sometime in January. It was. April, April 22. So it's coming up on a year. You got, you got, ma'am. So you started getting, when they started raising the interest rates, that's when you decided this is the time to get a house. Yeah, I wanted to be, I wanted to do the boss babe thing. I wanted to be a homeowner. I won't lie. It was, it was partly an emotional um, decision that I made. I won't lie. It was partly emotional. Uh, but I just wanted to own my home. I was tired of renting, spending $60,000 in rent every year. It, I was just like, you know what? Let me just buy a house. Yeah, but y- you were 5%. Nobody even went over the number. What city is this in? What You said what's the interest rate? What city are you in? Oh, I'm in Orlando. Florida. Oh, hell. <laughs> yeah, so I actually got a, a pretty good deal. I mean, no, the market here is kind of crazy. Ma'am. Mm, it's not as bad as Miami. It's not as bad as Miami. What part of Orlando are you in? Um, The east side, so near UCF. Ma'am. Mm-hmm. Yeah, who, and then who, that's not even. Ma'am, I still have ma'am, the auto loan. ma'am, mis- slow down, ma'am. Okay. okay, you do understand that when I travel the nation, there are three things in particular that I try to go by. In particular, when I travel somewhere, I try to go to wherever mm-hmm. major thoroughfares are that are going to go by an industrial center if I can find one, universities or a mall. And generally, those will establish mm-hmm. your landmarks. So if I go to Miami, mm-hmm. of course, development of Brickell, major industrial development there. Mm-hmm. Um, you go to other places. When I went to Nashville, Tennessee, you know, I'm going to go to uh, Vanderbilt. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go by Vanderbilt when I get there. Dallas, the Galleria. So what I'm saying is when you say UCF, ma'am, the... There was no way we thought this was a good idea. There's just no, there isn't anything affordable in Atlanta, in Orlando, Tampa. There, 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 that's the anathema of it. $350,000. Okay, let me just give you an idea here. $350,000. How many square feet is it? It's 2,400 square feet. How many bedrooms? How many bathrooms? Three bedroom, two and a half bath. 2,400 square feet with three bedrooms and two and a half bathrooms. Correct. Do you have any children? Yes, I do. How many? One. 
How old are they? An eight-year-old. So you got pregnant at 16. No, 18. I'm sorry. I'm, I went too far back. You're correct. 18. That's not much better though. Where are you from? Original. Where are you from? <laughs> yeah, originally? Where well, are you? Where well, are you from originally? Well, where are you from originally? To get married. Okay. Well, okay. That. Let's not, let's not, let's not, let's not evade. Married. Let's not do that. Where are you from originally? <laughs> okay. So how do you know I'm not originally from Orlando? With that Bama accent. Where are you from originally? Okay, okay, okay. Um, originally from Charlotte, yeah, North she, Carolina. She's a shame. She's a. I had to ask that four or five times. She ain't very proud of it. She came all the way down from Charlotte to overpay in Orlando. By the way, how long <laughs> have you been with the gentleman you're with now? Um, three years. So, in other words, you're a single mom who came down from. Mm-hmm. Babyland to come down to Orlando of all places. She didn't even go to a place that could have been marginally more affordable in Atlanta. She comes all the way down in the hyper gentrifying Orlando. Cause of course being near Disney world, what could possibly mm-hmm. go wrong? Um, mm-hmm. and she comes down there with her kid. Now, who are you on the run from? Um, I'm not on the run. I Ma'am, nobody, no, man. Okay, uh, okay, stop change. it. Just stop it. Just stop this lying. I don't appreciate that kind of stuff. Nobody moves from to Orlando because they quote want a change. Nobody does that. You only go to Orlando because you know it's going to be outrageously overpriced. You only go if somebody said, "Hey, we're going to make you. We're making you a much better deal than you got in Charlotte, but you have to come to Orlando to get it." And at 24 years old, 22 years old, nobody was offering you that. So you didn't go to Orlando because you wanted to change. You went to Orlando because things wasn't working for you in Charlotte. Ma'am, this is a tale as old as time. No woman moves four states, or two or three states away because I wanted a change. <laughs> oh, how about a career change then? A career change. Ma'am, nobody moves three states away because they want a career change. What do you have a degree in? In business. I work in banking and finance now. Okay, ma'am. You say you work in banking and finance. Mm -hmm. You're 26 years old. You say you have a degree in business. I don't know what that means. What type of business degree do you have? Hopefully, you're not going to say an MBA. No, I don't have a master's degree. I don't even I don't even have a bachelor's degree. I have an associate's degree in business administration. This keeps getting better. This keeps getting better. <laughs> well, I don't have all of that debt. That's a good thing. I no, you just got all the debt. other debt. No, you just got all the other debt. Jason, I don't have school debt. Congratulations. <laughs> Take a look at my mortgage, my house, and everything else. Yeah. yeah. She's breaking her arm, patting herself on the back. Like, I don't have school debt. Baby, you'd probably be better off with the school debt at this point. <laughs> she, You don't move down to Orlando carrying that kind of debt because you wanted to change. You move down to Orlando because you're running from something. Do you have kinfolk in Orlando? I do. I do. Okay, but are they who you moved in with when you came down there? Yes. She was running from something. I wasn't. I wasn't. I just okay, ma'am. I, I'm, not ask, I'm not asking. I'm not asking. I'm not asking. I'm just. I'm telling. I'm just reporting the news. She was running from something. Things were not working up in Charlotte, so she's coming down there. And just like when I kept asking, "Where are you from originally?" You know, she didn't want to say that at all. She was laughing, giggling, hemming and hawing. She didn't want to say where she was from. Things weren't working for her in Charlotte, and she said, "I gotta get up out of here." Either because I know some. She's down there with somebody else's kid. Where is your baby father at? Um, he's still back in Charlotte. Why did you two break up? Oh, uh, we just grew apart. Grew we apart, me ass. On the same. You don't have children path. with somebody you're going apart <laughs> yeah. from, ma'am. No, you know that. No, that doesn't work that way. So, no. I I suspect he's got something to play with why she felt like, ooh, I got to get three states away in a place where it won't be so easy to find me. 
Hell yeah, and I'm taking the kid with me because he was a perfectly fine individual for you to have a child with. Now, you didn't have a problem with that. That was. I was younger. I was younger. Ma'am, you were not three years old. You were 18. Yeah, that that was several years ago. That was not several years. That was not several years ago. That was a master's degree ago. Several years, yeah. That's a little bit more than several. But in any case, now she's in overpriced Orlando just to show that she makes impulsive emotional decisions. She makes impulsive emotional decisions, not really based on any type of logical thought. She makes impulsive decisions. And that is the worst thing a young person can do. Young people need to move slowly. So they make sure that when they step forward, they only got to step forward once. They don't have to step backwards. Mm. So now she's a single mom, 26 years old. She's got a 350. Now you said that the house was $350,000, correct? Correct. Okay. Do you have but a, I would say okay, it was ma'am. Oh, okay, I mean, ma'am. Okay. I Whoa, to, slow down. Okay. This is how you got in trouble here. She won't quit talking. I, I know it all. You're 26 sitting on a million dollars dead. Clearly not. Ma'am. Um, by the way, somebody just asked me a good question here. Now, did you have your degree before you went to Orlando or after? Um, after, after I got to Orlando. Okay. Because Charlotte is one of the banking hubs in America. And now you came to Orlando. Yes. You ca- okay, but you came to Orlando so to I work in banking. In Charlotte, but I didn't. Okay, have my degree yet. I'm gonna tell you about talking over the host, ma'am. You already knew that Charlotte was a banking hub. What kind of person who's gonna get into banking leaves Charlotte to go to Orlando? Um, someone who wants a change of location. Okay, but that doesn't help your career. That's taking a step backwards. I want to change in location, but you're going to take an L as far as your career is concerned. Yeah, get me out of here. Yeah, she didn't go for the... She said she wanted to change a location. She wanted to change a location, but not for money. Something was happening in Charlotte that she wanted to get away from. I'm not going to belabor the issue, but I'm just going to let everybody know, yeah, it doesn't add up because it doesn't add up from a career standpoint because it can't. She left because of something else. But in any case, now that I've settled that, um, what is your monthly house note? Um, it is twenty two hundred. And you thought this was better than rent? Uh, my rent was more than that. My rent was twenty five hundred. It's just you and a kid. Yes, but I mean, the, in the future, it could be more. Okay, you're just living above and beyond your means and not thinking very much. But okay, and the neighborhood that you're in, because that, that they got HOAs all over the place. Does that cover your HOAs? Yes, HOA, yeah. Okay. There are also another list of hidden fees in there, but you know what? I'll do you a solid. I'll just leave this right where it is right now. So we got a 30-year mortgage. Yes. Okay. Seven hundred and ninety two thousand dollars. Yeah. 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 For everybody wondering here, twenty two hundred dollars a month times three hundred and sixty. You all know I did that on my program, The Wealth Killer. The biggest mistake, financial mistake that women make going off and buying a house. Anybody who was wondering about that, by the way. Yeah. You all know it's coming with me. I'm the facts and figures guy. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Three, that's $792,000. That's how much you will have paid mm-hmm. at the end of this mortgage. The house itself is worth, it is worth 350000 And by the way, mm-hmm. she bought at the top of the market. As you all know, the market's on its way down now. She bought at the top of the market. It is now on its way down. With no end in sight. And the Fed's bailing out banks now. So she has a three hundred she has a seven hundred and ninety two thousand dollar mortgage on a three hundred and fifty thousand dollar house. And she has a child. 
By the way, what kind of car do you drive? Bracing myself. <laughs> um, it's a 2020 Mercedes C Class. There we go. Now you said C Class. <laughs> now are we talking about a CLA, a CLS, or an actual C Class? It's a C300 AMG. <laughs> Because anything sensible would have been asking too much. This heifer went off and got a whole damn eight. She couldn't just get a regular C class. You, I'm going to get a C300. Ma'am, what inferiority complex is ruling you? <laughs> I know. I get so emotional. I get so emotional. And it's like retail therapy. <laughs> okay. Is the therapy working? It works. It works. I feel better after I make these purchases. Do you, do. do you feel better six months later? Whew, now that's the hard part. <laughs> it's not very hard at all. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. When I look at the debt, no, I, I don't feel better because I'm just like, I'm never going to get out of debt. Well, yeah, and that's what I'm saying. So it's this was still we still feel good about this? You still feel good about it? Um, it's like a is what it is type of thing, you know. But like I said, I am dating someone. Okay. And <laughs> but ma'am, slow, slow down, slow down. Okay, slow down. down. Yeah, I'm hoping you hoping you can filch him. Okay, here's the issue. How much do you owe on that car? Because I'm figuring you owe in the neighborhood of eighty, a hundred thousand. No, not quite that much. Like 65. Okay. 65. What, how much of a year note? How many years? Um, oh, I don't even remember. I of think course it was seven you years. Yeah, seven years. years. How, when did you buy this car? Please tell me you didn't do it last year with the house. Please tell me you weren't dumb enough to do that. Please tell me you didn't do it last year with the house. I did. I did. I actually got the car for, before I bought the house. I got the car um, in 2021. <laughs> Brothers and sisters from around the world here. Um, Yeah. Uh, oh, I tried to hold out. I just could not do it anymore. Could not do it anymore at all. I can't take it. Uh, brief Pepto break. I will be back with you all here in just a few <laughs> moments. Brief Pepto break. Lord, Lord, your poor parents, Jesus, take the wheel and the tires. She, this is somebody's daughter. This is somebody's daughter. She's kill, She's sending them to an early grave. She's sending them to an early grave. To an early grave. Pepto on deck, y'all. Pepto on deck. Somebody help me out with the Pepto fun, because Pepto on deck. Uh, yeah. 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 Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Because anything else yeah. would have been anything else would have been sensible. Of course. How much is your monthly note? It's about five hundred dollars. About five hundred dollars or five hundred dollars? A little more than five, like five, like five sixty, something like that. Five sixty three, somewhere around there. How much did you pay down on that thing? Whew. <laughs> um, I put two thousand dollars down. Two thousand dollars down on a sixty five thousand dollar car. Mm-hmm. So essentially nothing. Right. Essentially nothing. Yeah. I don't even want to know what the interest is. It's more like a good faith type of deposit. Good faith? Whose faith? 
whose faith are we? Yeah, but I love my card. Where is your man? Um, he's not here right now. Project we Leroy, we thank you very much. Together. Project Leroy is trying to patch me together with the Pepto Fund. Thank you very much, brother, because I didn't even see this coming. <laughs> I did not see this coming at all. This blind-sided me. I did not see this coming at all. Oh, sorry, Jason. You were just speaking so many facts. I, I had to call in. I said, this is just too factual for me okay. not to call in. Here's my thing about it, though. Like I say, that's even with that amount of money that you claim you're paying a month, that's still, that, that, that's not coming out right. $560 a month on a $60,000 car, $65,000 car, that's not mm -hmm. coming out right. That doesn't come out right. So something's not right. Um, The term may be longer than six years. It may be seven no, or ma eight. No, ma'am. No, no, no. Ago, yeah, so I'm about to say no, 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 no. You be... For what you talking about, we're talking about something closer to eight or nine years. Actually, closer to ten. That's going to be closer to ten years. No, it's not ten. It uh, I'm pretty eight. sure. I'm pretty sure you don't know how long it is. But what I'm saying is, yeah, that's yeah. yeah we're talking about something closer. Okay. It's definitely more. It's definitely eight months or more, man. There, there's no way in the world. There's no way in the world. So that's. And the car has depreciated in value tremendously since then. So, of course, why not do anything sensible? Yeah. And the maintenance is so... Yeah, because expensive. because how much do you make a year? Uh, 150. You're 26 years old and you make $150,000 a year. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. I work as a business development officer for a regional bank. Yeah, here in and, Florida. Yeah, of course, they hire these people here to go ahead and take care of our finances for us because, of course, you, know, you wonder why the banks are closing all over the place. <laughs> um, <laughs> Ma'am, here's my issue. Why did you think that... See, here's what females usually do. Ladies, I'm telling the truth. You all expand your spending to fit your income. You don't reduce your spending to fit your budget. You expand your spending to fit your income. The more money you make, the more money you start spending. You don't see that as, okay, that's more money I need to sock away. It just becomes, okay, let me go ahead and start. Let me just go ahead and start spending it because I can afford it. So then you start going off and taking girls trips and buying consumer goods at an early age. At an early age. Yeah. Now that $150,000 a year, I'm a little skeptical of that, but I'm not going to dispute you over it. I am going to say that you are carrying far too much debt for a 26 year old. Yeah. This is Far too much. Outrageously yeah. too much. Way too much. Mm -hmm. Way too I agree. much. Now, she got a fella. How old is he? He is my age. Where is he? Where are his people from? His people are from Lagos, Nigeria. There you go. So that means he got a chick back in now. He got a wife and kids back in Nigeria. That's what that means. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead and start arguing against it and disputing it and debating it. Go ahead and do that now. So you can go and get this out your system. <laughs> go ahead and do that now because you want to think you're the cat's meow. Go ahead and do that now so you can get it out your system. Um, I don't believe so. I don't believe he does. All right. I just wanted you to go ahead and get it out your system for you. So now that we've done that, you can breathe a little easier. Okay. So she then got her the Princess Zamunda, and <laughs> she's coming to him. By the way, does he have any children? He doesn't. He doesn't. So he you does found not. you a single black man. What does he do for a living? He works in IT. So he's about 26, 27 years old. He lives in Orlando, Florida. Mm -hmm. He makes over six figures a year. Mm -hmm. And well, he actually lives in Tampa. Okay, well, uh, that's a little ways we away. Did, but, we don't live together. Okay. Oh, okay. She 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 got an online boo. I won't hold it against her. That's perfectly fine. He needs some distance. No, he no, needs some distance. He needs some distance so he can watch your dumpster fire from a distance. Okay. He needs to watch this dumpster <laughs> fire from a distance. He does not need to be up close with this. 
He needs to watch this dumpster fire for a distance. Tampa is not far from Orlando, Jason. It's like 45 minutes away. Man, I, I, I know where Tampa is. For you, it's an eternity. He's far enough away that he can watch the dumpster fire over the horizon as opposed to be sitting right in front of it, which is exactly where he wants to be. How long you two been, <laughs> quote unquote, dating? Uh, for three years. So you all have been dating for three years. Okay. So he's been mm-hmm. smart enough. He has been smart enough. So, yep. <laughs> he's been smart enough to, he's been smart enough to keep you in your position. I'm just going to be honest with you. The dumbest thing he could do is get himself permanently attached to this because a woman. <gasps> Why would you say that? Oh, ma'am, gosh. because you're financially irresponsible. We've and re- talked about it. We've talked about permanency. Okay. To answer your question, you are financially irresponsible, reckless, and incompetent. And I'm not saying that to be insulting. I'm just saying this is incompetence. You make $150,000 a year and you have grossly mismanaged it at an epic level. If he gets himself wrapped up with you, your reckless irresponsibility will now become his problem instead of remaining what it is, your problem. That's the issue. Yeah, that's what I told him. You have not demonstrated that you are not a problem. Hmm. And all you can really do is be a leech on him. He didn't buy that house. He didn't buy that car. But if he gets with you, he's going to have to start carrying your load. And you, at your track record shows, you will not see that as cause to change. You'll see that as, well, I got a bailout. And now I can just continue going because he's whatever portion of the load he shoulders you'll then be like well that frees up more of my money to spend how i want to (laughs) and that's all you're gonna do oh my god that is so true that's all you're gonna do you're (sighs) gonna say that frees up my more money for me to spend the way that i want to and that's all it will be so if he Mm -hmm. this if he's a young man and by the way where are you people from originally Carolina, Charlotte. Mm, All right, I'll see the paperwork on that. Stay where you are, Jordan. I'll be with you there for a minute. Make sure you get everything hooked up. Oh, my God, Jason, I am FBA all day, okay? Okay, okay. (laughs) she is spending frivolously all day. Um, But the bottom line (laughs) here is, like I say, and I, I don't mean any harm, but you've done plenty of harm on your own. And my issue is that's something that you're going to have to keep in mind there. That's something that you need mm-hmm. to keep in mind. That is not a good look. Yeah. Yeah. And what I'm saying is there, there's too many of y'all who, what I'm saying is, do you realize that shows a gross amount of disrespect? Disrespect to who? To him. To whom? To him. Hmm. Because you, I don't think I didn't think of course, so. of course you don't because you see everything is something for you to exploit and you're entitled. You didn't insist on any of this from the man who got you pregnant. You didn't insist on any of this. He ain't got to carry mm. nothing. And you threw them legs wide open mm. and said, let's have some kids. But you didn't require anything from him. Now you've come all the way down to Orlando and you are scheming on, well, how can I get Mr. Responsible to carry this load for me? Mm. Oh, I found found somebody who is nice, intelligent, and responsible. Let me get him to do all the things I never required of anybody before him. He needs to carry more of the load. He gets less of you. He gets less of your time than your baby daddy did. He gets less of your free time. He gets less of, you're not sharing any income with him. You're not helping him. You want, you want to be a liability and an expenditure to him. All the other fellas got all the benefits and he gets stuck with the bill. And what I'm saying is, all right, at this point right now, what is the advantage that he gets being with you? That your baby daddy didn't get. 
Um, well, honestly, honestly, ugh, gotta be honest, there's, there's, I can't think of anything. Now, she gets all of him. She gets 100% of his time. She gets access to his resources, his masculinity, his protection, his help, his upward mobility. She gets that, and he gets the bill. Now, I'm on the phone with mm. you, so I can I will give you a, I can tell you talk to you about being with him, but when I will not if I was on the phone with him, I'd be like, "Yeah, dude, um, don't get any entangling alliances. Don't do that. If, if the layup is fun, mm. all right, do your thing. But don't make a permanent attachment because she's not, she hasn't demonstrated genuine respect for you. She sees you as most women in her condition and position. He's, I found somebody to, uh, I found somebody to, um, I found somebody to shoulder this burden for me. But you're, hmm. you're not talking about what he's going to get for that. Um. Well, he'll get, you said, what would he get that my ex didn't get? There's nothing that he didn't get, but he'll still be rewarded. Okay, is he going to get the same? He's going to be paying much more than your baby daddy did. Is he going to be getting the same level of reward? Uh, yeah. And, yeah. The an and the answer is hell no. He will be carrying more of a burden and getting less of a reward than your baby daddy did. And of course, you'll do the usual single mom thing where you start being ownery and disrespectful about the children. You'll do all that too because he's here to help patch together your holes. So if I were talking to him, I'd say something a little bit different. I'm on the phone with you. I will tell you be a model citizen. I will tell you to absolutely be a model citizen. We, you and I both know you bogus and fake. I recommend that you remain fake, but you better not keep being bogus. Give this man absolutely no reason whatsoever to want to be somewhere else because you carry a string mm -hmm. of unacceptable liabilities. Here's the problem with what you've done. It's too easy to replace you. You're not prime real estate in Orlando. I mean, you're not like the usual chicks in Orlando anyway. You come down with a bunch of liabilities. I don't know what's so messed up in his life that he's chosen you, but if he's got done that, oh, well, yeah. well, ma'am, you carrying a million dollars at 26 years old of unnecessary debt. That's my issue. You're well, his life is not messed up because he chose you're carrying, me. Okay, uh, but ma'am. I think he made no, a good choice. No, ma'am. That's not what I'm saying to you. Okay, of course of course, you think it's a good choice. You're not coming here. What, what part of his financial life are you coming to come support? I mean, not financial, but other okay, parts whoa, of his life. Okay, whoa, slow down. What support. part of his life are you looking to support that he can't get from another chick tonight? Cause you just I said, mean, you just honestly, said you ain't going to break no bread. So what is it you going to do for him that another chick can't do for him tonight? Cause you just said you're not going to break any bread. I mean, I'm not going to say I wouldn't if he no, did you, it. No, you but... would not. No, you would not. You're not looking to support any part of his life. You got with him because you want to see how much of your life he will support. That's a one-way street. You have no intention of supporting anything. You want to know what benefits you can get. If something happened to him and he needed my financial support, I would. If I would something help. happened to him and he needed your financial support, you would leave his ass and go find a nigga <laughs> no. that ain't. You would, no, would leave him. You would leave him and go find a nigga that ain't struggling. That's what you would do. <laughs> if he did that, That's you would go try to true. you would no. try to go find somebody who ain't struggling. No, I would not leave him, Jason. That is That's what you would do. Yes, you would, man, because you only got with him because you needed something. 
<laughs> no, no. And if he did, That's no. Okay, would you, if he was making 30, you're if making he, it like No, if he was making, no, ma'am. No, ma'am, it's not, pro, no, ma'am, it's not prostitution, it's capitalizing. If he made $40,000 a year, would you still be with him? You said how how many thousand? If he made a thousand dollar forty thousand dollars a year, would you still be with him? Forty forty what's that? Um no, probably not. I mean, because okay, thank, honestly, thank you. Okay, thank you. We probably thank wouldn't you. even thank you. So you're not interested in a man who's struggling. Even though him getting with you is going to make him struggle. Even though getting with you is going to, ma'am, let's not talk over the host. Don't do that. You're not that boorish. Even though getting with you is going to cause him more undue struggle. She's okay with him struggling, carrying her. She has no intention of struggling with him. And if he loses his financial ability where it currently is, you're going to start immediately auditioning a replacement if you can get one. The only thing that will keep you with him is if another Mm. replacement is not available. That's the only reason you would say (laughs) if he starts struggling, you're out. And you know that. Hmm. Well, I wouldn't just up and leave. Let's just say. How yes, about you that? would. You up. You up and, up and left the Carolina. <laughs> oh you up there. and left the Carolinas with another man's kid. You up and left the oh, Carolinas sure. with another man's kid. Talking about what you wouldn't do. I wouldn't just up and leave. Didn't you just up hmm. and leave the Carolinas thirty six months ago? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she just up and ran from the Carolinas when she was much younger and didn't have as much mobility. She's telling you today, older with more mobility and more incentive. Oh, I wouldn't do that. Um, excuse me, you did it when you were much younger. It would be easier for you now. Hmm. 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 Something to smoke on. (laughs) I mean, I don't smoke, but something to think about. Be a model citizen. Mm -hmm. I am. I am. My biggest piece of advice to you is be a model citizen. You've made some rather unfortunate, in all seriousness, you've made some rather unfortunate, difficult decisions. You bought a house at the top of the market right when things were going up. Do you think it's going to crash? Ma'am, I mean, it's it's already going down now. So the real issue is it going down is when we'll come back up again. Okay. So what I am going to say here. I just don't want to lose all that equity. Like all that equity. You don't have any equity, ma'am. I mean, it's you're, you're ma'am. I mean, the house is worth $350,000 and you've got a mortgage that puts it at over twice that amount. Oh yeah. What equity? Yeah. There's my whole point. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But Jason, you know, you always get it right have not heard you get it wrong yet. Well, I I don't know where the Prince of Zamunda came from. What I will say is don't do anything to alienate him. You need as many allies as you can get. One other question. How tall are you? I am 5'4". How much do you weigh at 5'4 with a kid? 170 pounds. (laughs) You're going to be a little jolly jiggling thing single. Okay. All I can say is I, I don't know where you found Poindexter from. I don't know because like I say, she, she doesn't have respect for him. He because is. He is Poindexter. He is. Why do you say and that? I like it though. Really? How, why do you say that? 
What that he's Poindexter? Yes. Um, he's what um people would probably consider to be a nerd. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he's your baby daddy. Was he a nerd? <laughs> Complete opposite. My oh, oh, daughter's oh, dad. Okay, yeah. The guy that she was, was a football player and I was a cheerleader. <laughs> yeah, the the fellow she was sexually attracted to. Oh, tell me more. <laughs> yeah, the, the <laughs> fellow she was sexually attracted to. Eh. Yeah, he played defense for the football team. And now she's looking for the nerd that she ignored back in school, wouldn't have anything to do with. Now she's like, can you come save me? So this is why, when I was talking about before, she doesn't have respect for this guy. (laughs) This is what I meant. So that's why I'm saying. You better tuck that in and hide that for the rest of your life because listen to me, young lady. You are 26 years old with a million dollars of debt and about $5 million of silliness. This is the last train leaving. Yes, 100%. I recommend that your plus size ass be on it. This is the last train leaving. (laughs) I'm on it. And whatever arrangement he he offers you, (laughs) stop it. I'm a size 10. (laughs) Whatever arrangement he makes you, I suggest you accept it. Whatever he ought, whatever he's offering on the menu, I suggest you start eating with smile on face and hold on to him and do not let go. (laughs) Cause we don't know where he'll be in five or 10 years, but wherever he is, I recommend you be in close proximity to him. Right. Right. Don't screw it. Don't screw it up. Cause you need plenty of help right now. That house is going to be an issue. That's going to be your your overpay. Yeah. Your goal was to pay less than rent, and in reality, you've walked into a buzz saw. Mm. In reality, you've walked into a buzz saw. Single mom, one kid, mm-hmm. she's paying twice what the house is worth. Now, I mean, she's literally hoping that this house doubles in value. And in, in your mm-hmm. case, would actually have to triple in value. That house would have to be worth a million dollars. Now, let me ask you one question. The neighborhood that you are in, is that a million-dollar house neighborhood? Um, okay, you're hurting, yourself. Enclave, you're, hurting so yourself yeah. right, you're hurting yourself right now. You're just hurting yourself right now. If, that was, if, that, if there were million-dollar houses in that neighborhood, why come yours isn't one of them? Oh, you mean are they a million-dollar houses now? No, but do I predict in the future? Okay, yes. what what qualifies you to predict what those houses will be, quote, in the future? Um, just on trend, just on trend, they the the houses in the area have doubled in value like over the past 10, 15 years. So I would anticipate that in the next 10 to 15 years that my house would go up in value, hopefully. Go up in value, yeah. Go to a million dollars in value. Yeah, I'm not sure about a million. I'm not sure about that. Neither am I. Mm -hmm. Hold on tight. Do not let go. Mm -hmm. Period, point blank, end of discussion. I don't care about side chicks. I don't care about anything. You need to hold on to this fellow here. I would not. Yeah, I'm going to hold on to dear life. I would not take a chance on anything else happening. Jordan, calm yourself down, young man. You're up next. Keep your camera on, sir. If it goes off again, I'm going to think you And don't put your phone down. I'm about to get her off the line. In any case, ma'am, thank you for your story here. Boy, I had hope for the future. Then she got on the phone. I'm in the chat. There goes that. I'll be in the chat. (laughs) Bye, Jason. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight here. Boy, I'm telling you, Pepto ain't going to get it. I need some Hennessy. 
I need something with some kick to it. That is, and that Pepto ain't going to hold me tonight. All right, here, uh, Jordan. All right, you're on live with the business. What's on your mind? Um. Okay, so to make it quick, I guess, my name's Jordan, obviously. I go to IU in Fort Wayne, and I'm studying Bachelor of Science in Dental Technology in hopes of going to dental school, doing specializing in something. Um, so I guess that's my education route. Specializing I, in something. I don't like the sound of that already, but go ahead. Well, it's either going to be ortho or periodontics. You need to be clear on that now, young man. This doesn't need yeah. to be a, uh, well, I'm not so sure. And, uh, no, you need to be rock solid sure about that right now. So that you can devote 100% of your energies and going in the right direction and committing yourself to it. This is not the time. Oh, I'm sure not sure what I want right here. This is how you end up being a dentist who's not sure what he wants to do. If you, if you make decisions too quickly, you are reckless. If you make decisions too slowly, you're indecisive. And that becomes a habit if it isn't already. So I'm going to recommend that you fix that one right now. How long have you been in school? Um, I'm a junior. You have been in there too damn long not to know which direction you're going to go in. This is a bad sign for your future. Stop being indecisive. This You cannot be a working professional and you are indecisive. You will make indecisive financial decisions, indecisive location decisions. You cannot afford to do this. So, I don't know which one you favor more. I recommend you take a look at what has the most upward mobility and choose that one. But you need to make that decision now. Yeah, that's pretty deep. Um, I guess I have struggled. This isn't why I called in, but since you mentioned it, I have struggled with indecisiveness. And um, I guess that kind of is why I'm calling in because my fiance, she wants to move out. Um, and you can see her on her screen. She wants to move out. And I've got a year left for my undergrad. Um, I live at home. I have, you know, just a normal household, no, no, no strict rules or anything like that. But, you know, we're getting married here soon. And how old are said, you, son? Uh, 25. How old is she? About to be 25. 24. Does she have any children? No. Where is she from originally? She's from here, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Okay. How long have you two known each other? We went to high school together, but we started dating like five years ago. Let me ask you a direct question, young man. Have you ever suspected that she has cheated on you? Cheated? Like physically? Um, having sex with other men? No. He, but he knows. I I'm about to say, yeah, he knows what I'm asking him. Well, a few years back. Yeah, there you go. I caught her texting this guy. Um, she said go. happy birthday to him. And then come to find out, you know, they would text regularly, I guess. Okay. Let me try this a different way, young man. This other fella, I'm not going to get into why you were prompted to look through her phone, but if you or look at why she was doing that, but if you did, then that means there was already smoke. So that right there tells you everything. If you're suspicious, you're suspicious for a reason. However, let's go a little bit further. This other fella, did you know him? I knew of this guy for sure. Okay. How did you know of him? Athlete. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? I think mm -hmm. I just got off the phone with this story. Folks, there's nothing new under the sun. What was she in high school? Was she a cheerleader? No, but she wanted the athletes. But you're not an athlete. I play baseball, but baseball is you're not. You're not an athlete. athlete. No, 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 no not, offense. No offense, young man. Player. Yeah, no offense, young man. You're not an athlete. But um, no, no, no offense. But uh, yeah. And she wasn't with you in high school. I'm just gonna be honest. She didn't. I don't know. I never reached out to her, but she she wouldn't have gone for me in high school. I'll say that. I'm, I'm sure. And now you want to marry her. 
just a few years later. She's very convincing. And you're very gullible. <laughs> it's my sister in the background. Because here's the issue. This chick is the prettiest thing you ever been with. You don't have a lot of experience with females. You haven't been with a lot of females. You are like a lot of responsible young black men. You have focused on improving yourself, being a credit to the people, improving the landscape, honoring your father and your mother. That is admirable. And you need to be with a woman who respects that. Not a female who her preferred choices fell through. And let me go grab this little cornball dude over here because he's going somewhere. And then if I get a kid with him or whatever, then I can ball out. Then I can bounce out. Even though she'll be in a very compromised position, irresponsibility doesn't change. So my thing is, you said she was in high school. She liked athletes then. And then a few years ago, you just caught that. So what I'm saying is that's who she is. Now, she might be a good employee. This is not about her being a good employee. This is about who you are as a person. And this is who she is. But you already know this. Now, you're going to school to possibly be a dentist or an orthodontist. You better get that straightened out because the more disciplined you are, the more directed you are, the better your life will be exponentially. By the way, what's she doing? Man. She, I don't want to dog her out, but, quote, she's in school. She goes to WGU right now. Do you know what that is? It's an online program. Yes. And you Yes, yeah, so, I'm, I'm familiar yeah. with Western Governors. Yes. Okay. Um, it's, a, it's a legit school if you actually... Sir, son, it. you asked me, did I know what WGU was? I said, yes, Western Governors. Then you said, it's a legit school. The fact that I can no. tell you what that acronym means probably tells no. you I know what it is, but go ahead. No, I'm saying it's legit if you actually do it, but she, she'll do one class. She'll work on her schoolwork like once a month. So... She has an excuse saying, hey, I'm still in school. I'm still in school, but she's not really in school. So in other like, words, I'm, so in other words, she's nursing. No, um, she didn't even doing that. Not even do. She started out in nursing. There you go. There you go. I'm not, out, I'm not guessing my way through this. No, yeah, she, she did start out in it and then dropped. And now she's doing healthcare management. Right? Thank you. So and, she's trying to move at her own pace. But the problem is she's not focused and not moving at her own pace. Yes, brother, you need yeah. people. OK, listen to me. This is how young men screw their lives up. You need there's that meme with the lions that says only roll with people who are on the same mission that you're on. Mm -hmm. She's not part of the herd of lions, pack of lions. She isn't. She's not. Mm -hmm. She's looking for you to be the responsible person. She, she, she can lounge and mm -hmm. she is just the prettiest thing that you ever been with. That's why you got stars in your eyes. If you actually would actually take some time to meet some other females and so you can make a comparison a real mm -hmm. world comparison is this chick the best i can do because let me be very very clear and how old is your sister 20 okay 20. she knows the damn, let me, I, i'm gonna say this with her in the room because she knows the damn truth a woman is never single women do not pedestalize men and women absolutely never never ever tell themselves that you are the best she can do. Ain't that right, sis? Yes, that's right. She knows that's right. A woman never does that. I ain't gonna ask what her situation is, but I'm pretty sure her life situation bears it out. That's why she over there giggling. She's snitching on herself. And that's the bottom line. Brother, they, they don't, that, that's, we sit up here and pedestalize them and you want that to be, you want her to be the best you can do so that you can start focusing on other things. Okay, now we got the companionship situation solved. I can go focus on these other things. And that's the wrong way to think about it. Because you're, she's, if she's not willing to cooperate with that program, you're shackled to it. And we went shopping for um, the apartment this weekend, right? And who's got the budget. job? Well, she works full time. And I have a part-time gig while I'm in school. Um, she works at Parkview. Okay, well, you don't have to go on all these details there. My, my real point here is, from a relationship standpoint, my ears are all the way up. My ears are all the way up. I, I, 
I'm not, I'm not going to tell you I approve of it. I'm not going to say that. You saw the first question I asked you. You saw it. Because I can look at you and see. I've you, you remind me of a young Jason Black. You remind me of myself at 16, 17. By the time I got in my 20s, it was different. But you remind myself at 16, 17. So I know a responsible, square, young black male when I see him. And that's great. That's wonderful. In the hands of a female who knows what to do with him. And exploiting him is not knowing what to do with him. She's keeping her options open, young man. And marrying her will not change this. You already know this. I will also tell you something else that your sister knows. You are under no obligation and there is no incentive for you to marry her. She will be right where she is. She's not going anywhere. So when you make the decision that you want to marry her at some point in the future, she will be right where you left her. Now, I know what you're telling yourself right now. There's this, there's this feeling that's bubbling up in your midsection right now. It's a very unpleasant one. It's so tight that it actually almost feels like physical pain. It's a feeling that goes something like this. But Jason, some other dude gonna be grabbing him butt cheeks and doing whatever, dude. You can't prevent that now. And you see every warning sign known to man. You have no control over that now. You want to know what manhood is? Manhood is you managing your access to women, not her access to men. You want to make her start taking you more seriously? Do one thing, young man. Show her that you can pull two other chicks. As pretty, mm, clearly you haven't. Not as, not as good or better than her. Because if you did, you wouldn't be sitting here talking like you are to me now. You didn't probably well, got some soup cans. You have not got some chicks who are, belong with an orthodontist. Oh, no, not, not with that. Okay, young man, let's, let's, I'm not guessing my way through this. I'm trying to give you the Reader's Digest version. He's having consternation. He's having denial. This is tough. He ain't heard it like this before. I'm reading the mail. Brother, do you realize I went straight to the correct question to ask you about her? We didn't even have to talk for any real length of time. <sighs> There's nothing new under the sun. I can look at you and see why she wants to be with you. And I can also see that she doesn't know what to do with it. She's got plans for you, but there are plans that serve her, not plans that serve you. Yeah, she said she doesn't want to be a work because I have a business and no, you she's, don't, but go ahead. Well, no, I have a screen printing and embroidery business. Okay. We'll come back to that young man. But anyway, she yeah. wants, well, to, no, no, wait. she wants to be taken care of. She wants to sit there yeah. so she can post pictures on Instagram. Let's just cut the chase. She wants to post pictures on Instagram, take booty shots. And this is why you're enamored. Cause this is the flyest thing. A little young square niggas ever been with. I understand it, but you're blinded by it. You don't have to marry her. There's no incentive. There's no obligation. There's there's no pressure on you. Where's she going? I feel the pressure, though. I do. From you her, feel the okay her family, the, and that's why you need to show them you run this. She's not going anywhere. Listen to me, Miss Sister back there knows it's the damn truth, and you probably seen her do it. Women are master negotiators. I've covered this before. Women are master negotiators. They always offer us a very high ceiling. What well, they call it in sales. There's a customer ceiling and the customer's floor. The highest that they are going to ask for and the lowest that they're willing to accept. Women never give us their floor in negotiation. She's never going to tell you what is the minimum she's going to accept. She's always going to push up on you for the maximum. Because she knows you haven't been with very many women and she knows you're most likely to give into it. And you are. So it's not like she missed her calculations. You want her to take you seriously? Switch the style up and let her know, you know what? I could do this. Absolutely. I'm going to wait. You letting them folks influence you and change your mind. You know what? Let That's me take a little bit. Let Wow. Because I'm guessing my way. Brother, do you realize that you are like every other man out there who's been in your position? The females have always been able to identify your kind. Always. You're never their first choice. You're always their last option. After they've quote unquote had their fun, here's the problem. They're willing to marry you and still do that because she feels like, okay, great. Now that I got a ring and a state obligation, he has to accept my bull crap. She, she said that 
I was like, well, why didn't you go for me before? She said, well, the guys, those guys weren't ready for. There you go. Real- okay. Well, wh- then why are you sitting up here rushing yourself? Why? This is what I mean by you don't have very many options of females. If you did, you wouldn't be giving in and buckling to pressure from somebody who has no leverage. This is why young men need to prove to themselves that they can have, that they can entertain the company of more than one woman. Cause women can see if you won't do that and they're going to abuse the hell out of it. If she sees that you're going to treat her like a fan and make her your only option, she's going to go straight to work abusing it. And she's going to pressure you early. You know why? Cause she's terrified to death that you're going to meet another female somewhere and get some damn confidence about yourself which you currently don't have. When's the last time you told her no to something? When is the last time I told her no and actually stuck with it? Um, Thank you. That's enough. I'm not sure. She's found a beta who better hurry up and figure out where his alpha is. Because if she gets you down that lot, gets you down that aisle, game over. Because she knows where you're going. She can see where your trajectory is going. And she wants to be along for the ride, but only for the benefits of it. And then what she's been doing to you, she's going to kick that into overdrive because she will believe that now she has the protection of the state. And that you will be obligated to take care of her, but that she will not be obligated to do anything else. You know what? There's a on, there's a, a meme online from the, a pimp. I forget what his name was. Everybody knows his name. It's, I don't know if it was Rosebud or whoever. But he said, fellas, get you a female who likes you more than you like her. Fellas, go off and try to get a female that they like her more than she likes you. Get the chick who is invested in you more than you're invested in her. That's the one that's going to stand by you. That's the one that's going to invest in you. That's the one that's not going to be pulling no trick bag garbage. That's the one who has pitched camp and she's not looking to keep her options open. The chick you got is young, but she's already demonstrated she's not responsible. She wants to keep her options open and she really wants a nigga with some swag and that ain't you. You're more beneficial, you're more responsible, you're more productive, you will be better in the long run. She wants that, but she also wants that, well, I'm attracted and hot and heavy for. And what I'm saying is that's disrespect. Now, it is one thing if she wants to disrespect you, it is another thing if you accept this, that's you disrespecting yourself. She told me she wanted me to get a sleeve tattoo once, and I'm like, what the Do you have any tattoos? I don't believe in tattoos. Okay, let me try this one more time, nigga. Do you have any tattoos? No. Okay, because you said you don't believe in them. I'm asking you a straight question like a man. She's trying trying to do to you what Ciara did to Russell Wilson. She's trying to transform you into the type of dude she wants. This is anti-manhood. A man is supposed to imprint himself on a woman. She's supposed to be becoming more like you. Instead, she's trying to get you to become more like her. My sister said, tell him what I said. And she, she was like, she's going against her desires um, because we're in a constant battle of, because we, we went shopping for the apartment this weekend that we're going to move out in like six months. That was a plan. And she wanted to get the more expensive towels. Right. Towels. And what I'm saying is I'm you, like, can, you can already see all these problems. Now you want to marry it? Now, I hear your sister. Where's your dad? My dad passed from lung or liver cancer. When you were how old? 18. So I'm 20. Uh, yeah, but we, we got you. You you have acquiesced dad, to a lot of feminine energy. Well, you have dad, acquiesced to a lot of feminine. It's not a debate. You've acquiesced mm-hmm. to a lot of feminine energy. Mm-hmm. And that's not masculine. You're supposed to be leading. Leading is when we tell women no. Mm -hmm. And you're not very good at saying no. So all you're going to do is end up being a hempec beta and you will be miserable. I am now. I am not going to encourage you to marry this woman. So I'm not going to tell you don't do it because everybody knows my philosophy. My principle is I don't ever tell people to break up who they're with because I'm not going to snuggle up with you. So if she's not there with you, don't call Jason. I'm not coming. But what I will tell you is 
I'm not going to endorse this. This is every red flag known to man. I'm not going to tell you don't break up with her, but I, I think you need to, I think this marriage thing needs to be rethought because her folks are thinking about good. We can shovel her off on the respect, responsible young man. And now he's her problem. She's his problem now, not ours. They're kicking her out. They're kicking her out this, this year. Okay. Yeah. And now you're going to fix it. And she's all, she's already demonstrated. They've already messed up with her. They didn't raise her to be solid. Now she's going to be your burden. And you haven't even gotten off the ground yet? No, she's going to need to earn the right to be with you. But you're not a guy who thinks he needs to earn the right to anything. You think she's more valuable than you. You don't actually, you think it's pompous and arrogant to say, you know what, you need to earn the right to be with me. Yeah, I, I caught you on the phone doing all kinds of scandalous stuff here. You're doing all kinds of dirty stuff on this phone. Eh, now nah, you got to earn that. But we've been together. We ain't really been together. Nah, you got to earn that. When? Starting right now. Forget that. I get somebody else. Yeah, go get them. Yeah, go do that. I think that's a good idea. Matter of fact, why don't you go prove to me you can pull somebody better than me? Matter of fact, let me insist on that. Let me go on. You go prove to me you can pull somebody better. Now, you see, this is where you're going to find out if you're a man or not. Because a man needs to be willing. A man cannot have anybody putting anything ahead of his purpose. And you got her value ahead of your purpose, which means you don't have one. And a woman doesn't respect a man who makes her his purpose. And amazingly enough, you think, I know they're going to tell you otherwise. A woman does not respect a man who makes her his purpose. She don't want a fellow, the fellow that she's dreaming about this. You call her on the phone with that dude is probably all. She's probably sitting there saying he's got two or three other females he's talking to. Yeah. And she desires him. You're doing the exact opposite, thinking you're getting brownie points. And guess what? You're getting opposite results. Show her that you do not need her. And if you really want to gain her respect, show her you don't need her. I didn't say say it. I said show it. Tell her, That's yeah, good. here's the deal. I'm not going to do this. Yeah, moving in with you. Eh, bad idea. Let me go ahead and stack, get, get done with school first and stack my paper up. And if I still feel the same about you after I got a doctor after my name maybe we'll take it up then but right now i'm not worried about that well i can't be sitting around my eggs this and the other you know what do whatever you're gonna do um i'll kick it with you but as far as marrying you and uh, i i'm i'm we're gonna have to earn that bro that sounds that's crazy that's crazy but your sister knows i'm telling the truth because that's the way she feels about men she doesn't want a man who who needs her she wants the man who doesn't need her as young men, you've been hen in single mother homes to think that our job is to kiss women's rumps. And in reality, it is counterintuitive. You think the more I acquiesce, the more she'll love me. That's not the way it works. She's looking for the man who will say no. She's looking for the man who has his own life. She's looking for the man who tells her he has a purpose bigger than her. Now she has something to look up to. Because she knows all she brings to the table is sex. What, he's looking for something more than sex. Ooh, that's the guy I got to be with. The fellas looking for sex don't produce anything. The fellas going to orthodontic school do. Demonstrate to them that you have found your purpose and your mission. And that will gain her respect. Still don't think you should marry her. But that will gain her respect. But right now she has shown you utter disrespect. But I'm going to be totally honest with you. You've given her no reason not to. You have allowed her to walk over you. I'm going to get mad because she's walking over you. You laid down. Wrote the word welcome over your forehead. So she's treating you the way you're allowing. Being Mr. Nice Guy isn't interpreted by most females as something respectable because the, you're not demonstrating to them that you've got an edge to you. So she's thinking, if I get into a life or death situation, this guy doesn't really have that in him. And you haven't demonstrated that you do. How is she going to believe you're going to stand up to other men? You won't stand up to her. So yes, she will come and take the bag from you and take your resources and let you pay for all this stuff and then go lay up with another dude. Because you've demonstrated it's okay. But you don't have what it takes to demand more than that. So you have a decision to make. 
But if you are asking me what to do, I've already told you. I will not endorse this marriage. I will not tell you to break up with her. I do not do that with people. I never do that with people. Marriage, I think you need to think this over. And then if you decide you want to go through with it, think it over again. And if you decide after that you still want to go through with it, eh, think it over one more time. When are you going to be finished with school? Yeah, so this after this eight weeks, I'll be in my senior year. I'll be, so I have 32 more weeks for that, for my undergrad. I'll be applying to dental school. I have a year off from dental school to when I actually go. So I guess I could just add it up. Sounds like a year and a half. Well, undergrad, yeah. Okay. I expect to hear back from you when you have finished, well, when we finished our junior year. I expect to hear back from you. Sis, make sure he calls me. I will. Because your brother is about to screw up because women will say this to each other. She knows, but she, your sister knows, males will allow females to run game on them. Uh, she's not going to let another female sit in front of her and run game. She's like, baby, look here. You got the same thing I got. I know you getting over my dumb ass little brother. You ain't getting over on me. He's, he in, me. he's in love. I'm not in love with you. I can see you for what you are. It's just like being a father. A, a man ain't going to let another male sit in his house with his daughter sitting up here running games. It's like, okay, you done fooled my little dumbass daughter. You ain't fooling me. Yeah, and that's what your sister understands. If she She's probably already sat with her. And she's like, yeah, I, she went to school with that girl. I'm talking about girls like her. She's already seen it. So she knows what she's dealing with. And she isn't fooled. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be either. Mm -hmm. I expect to hear back from you when you are done with your junior year. Be seven weeks. Then I expect to hear back from you then. Okay, dope. What are Thank you waiting you, around here for? All right. See ya. Y'all, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. In the... uh. Okay, everybody on Zoom, I got a few folks there on Zoom. I got to ask you all to wait a minute because I got folks who've been sitting on Blog Talk here and I'm about to run out of time. So I'm going to try to run through Blog Talk real fast here because I'm about to run out of time on Blog Talk. Let me get call from Erico267. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, yes, it's Timmy from Williamsport. Um, good evening. Um, another great broadcast. I just want to ask a quick question. Um, when are you going to do another... Um, one of those, um, um, the interviews that you have with the individual females, you ask questions. Uh, soon. I'll be doing that again soon. Um, if I, if someone wanted to, I guess, like do like an interview with you, like what would be the process? Not me, myself, but, but somebody who would like to come on. It would depend on, it would depend on who they are. And it would depend on the situation. So I'd have to know the details of it. But if they want that, by the way, anybody who does one thing, because I have some folks who asked me to interview and I told them I was going to get back to them. So if any of you are listening in, you're welcome to go ahead and email me now. I got some of this stuff I was working on the beginning of, in the last year, beginning of this year, taken care of, even though I'm doing a lot of running around right now. But uh, definitely email me at handle the business at yahoo.com, handle the business at yahoo.com. And uh, definitely go ahead and hit me up and. I'll see if we can come to terms or if we can't, because like I say, there's certain situations I just can't, but um, if we can come to terms, just okay. tell them to get in touch with me. Thank you very much for giving us a call. Let me get caller mirror code 901. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello, my name is Dave from Queens. Okay. Your phone is crackling and breaking up. I'll give you one more try here. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, Dave from Queens. Okay. Jay from Queens on his struggle phone. What's on your mind? All right. Uh, is this better? What is on your Hello? mind? Such I, as it is. On mine, it was like the other girl, she was 26. She said she had a million dollars in debt at 26. She's right at right? it. She's right at it. Okay, well, okay sir. So, okay, you're slowing this down. Don't ask questions. Go ahead and say what you got to say. We're moving on. Oh, so what I'm saying is like, 
I just want to know the business, like what type of bank she worked with. I wish I had a million dollars in a credit line type of thing. Well, she doesn't have a million dollar credit line, sir. What she did was she overpaid for a home. So uh, any shady bank will sit up here and overextend you on a mortgage. She has a $350,000 okay. house that's going to ultimately end up costing her almost $800,000 at the end of the term of the mortgage. So that's not oh, hard to so do. So she's adding that up too, huh? No, I'm adding it up. What I'm saying is if you take a look at her monthly her monthly mortgage $2,200 a month oh. times 360 months which is 30 years yeah, yeah you come up to almost $800,000 so yeah she's she's behind the eight ball she most likely has put down next to no she put down the bare minimum on her car and put down next to nothing on the house so she's basically financing the whole thing at a 5% interest rate so at this point right now yeah she's taking what could have been an asset and now it's going to be a while before it stops being a liability Thank you very much for giving us a call. Let me get caller code 510. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Jason. This is Tango from, from Utah. All right. Tango from Utah. What's on your mind? Okay. So quick question. So um, my friends with benefits wants to hop on the truck with me because I'm a trucker. And she overheard me having a conversation with my CPA on how much I grossed last year. Big so mistake. So now she wants to hop on the truck with me. Big mistake. Nigga, what were you thinking? Hey, I, I know, I know. <laughs> she, yeah, she, That's it, you're done. She That's it, you're numbers. done. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, listen to me. For those of you out there who don't understand, this is the reason why you done misuse my damn teaching. There are three people that a man uh -huh. cannot lie to. There are three people that we absolutely cannot lie to. We cannot lie to our banker. We cannot lie to our lawyer. And we cannot lie to our CPA. Those are the three people that we mm -hmm. must tell the truth to because they have a legal responsibility. But furthermore, they can't help us if we come to them with our fictions. So you sat her next to you in the truck when you had to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So essentially, your CPA had you on the witness stand and she knows you didn't lie to him. Yeah, I mean... He was just going over uh, how much. Okay, yeah, okay. Taxes, what, what, what do you want? What do you want to ask me now that you fried and splayed yourself? What do you want to ask me? I'm saying, is it is it, is it a good move to bring her on the truck, even though we're going to be making more money since now there's two people on the truck instead is of she, one? Is she driving? No, she's uh, planning on going to get training right now. To, okay, to when she CEO. when she gets some training, then you can discuss that. Then who owns the truck? I do. Okay. When she finishes her training, then you can discuss it then. She should not be in that truck unless she is an asset. And an asset means that she's got them wheels turning. Asset does not mean sitting next to you. Asset means it does not mean she riding shotgun. Asset means that she's turning them wheels when you ain't. Oh, yeah, definitely. That, that, that's exactly what okay, I'm going to Okay, then, then, then we, we will around. discuss this when she has made good on her intention to finish her training. Okay, so then if she if she does turn a profit for me, would that mean that I cross right that bridge when you get to it? You are already ten miles down the road trying to make a commitment to her. This is what I'm telling you. It's simp night, y'all. The uh, the young man who just got off the phone with me, he's thinking that y'all are already trying to figure mm -hmm. out a way to make a commitment. A woman needs to earn a commitment. She needs to jump through fields of fire and hop over barbed wire and do backflips. By the way, does she have any kids? Well, I'm saying, Jason. By the way, does she have any kids? No kids, Jason. How old is she? 26. And how old are you? 33. Did you say 26 or 22, sir? Say that again? How old is she? You mumbled when you said her age. I said 26. She's 26. You're 32. You claim she doesn't have any children. Correct. If she wants to finish her training, you can go ahead and do Correct. that. You evaluate her on a case-by-case, day-by-day basis. You're already trying to project a year or two down the road. She hasn't qualified for what the task is in front of her, and you're already trying to figure out, okay, when we get to the next step, when we get the next step, we'll deal with that there. Right now, she needs to demonstrate that she is an asset. She is in no position to be an asset right now. If she follows through with it and stays consistent, then we'll check back in a couple of years and see how it's worked out. And then we will do a re-examination and a reconsideration then. But she needs to earn being in your presence. You, you're what already saying, setting up to get benefits. She needs of, to earn that. And you've already opened up the books to her. But I'm saying the, the reason why it, 
I was I, I didn't mind her being around because it's been five years. I've watched her and I've I've evaluated her. Okay, you, but her. you haven't watched her and evaluated her enough to, ma- to that you were certain you wanted to marry her. So knock it off. Very clearly, the no, last five years. Because- very clearly, the last five years did not reassure you that you need to marry her. Very clearly, that didn't happen. Now you tell them. Yeah, you're trying to tell me about the next couple of years. Yeah, because she doesn't want kids. There's no purpose of me even thinking about marriage. If a woman doesn't want kids. That's even weird. Why do you but want a relationship? In- why do you want a relationship with a female who doesn't want kids if you do? Because she, because she she handles all of the the small. Uh, all of the do you want children do when, I, when I'm not home? Do you want children? Of course, yes. Then you already know where this relationship is heading. I do. Then in that case, I wouldn't have her off in my finances real heavy because she comes with an expiration date. You can mm. honor her. You can have fun but with I mean, her. But by definition, mm. if she doesn't want children, all mm. you can really do is have fun with her. But what are, we, what are we committing to? She's not going to be part of your genetic legacy. And if that's ultimately where you're going, then there's already a hard, firm expiration date. So my word to you is if she's an asset to the company, that's good. That's great. That's wonderful. Um, I hope it lasts as long as it lasts. Keep her out of your finances. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for giving us a call. A woman who's you're not gonna make a long term or commitment like that because he wants to have children. Eh, I wouldn't have her off in the finances. Everybody on Zoom, just stay where you are. I'll be with you there in just a moment. I haven't forgotten about you. I haven't forgotten about you. Jeff is out there on Zoom. Everybody loves hearing from here. Let me get called Miracle four hundred one. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where you calling from? Uh, what's up, Jason? It's Malik from Toronto, Massachusetts. Okay. I talked to you before. Take, okay, it sounds like you're at a car out. wash. You, you got a lot of background oh, sorry, noise. I'm going to give you five so, seconds to get that, that taken um, care of. Can you, hear, can you hear me? You're on international. Can you hear me now? Yeah, you're on international broadcast here. What is your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, my, all right, my name is Malik. Call from Taunton, Massachusetts. I called from the show last time about that cop that took down half the police force. Okay. Oh, man. If you, if you know about my man, program, then you know took, it is a broadcast, not a show. D.L. Hughley has a show. Steve Harvey has a show. I have a broadcast. Anyway, what's on your mind? Uh, just on the whole feminism thing, how they, all the chicks out of the mighty have fallen, man. How they took the propaganda and it's blowing up in their face right now, which is pretty funny to me. Well, all, yeah, they all talk about- it certainly started that way. And obviously I love to see when the plan comes together, but also understand that you're dealing with a crafty organism and it is going to begin shifting what it does. Uh, it goes back to what you said about the equality. They all want equality and they want their cake and eat it too, but they don't want to do any of the hard labor jobs or any blue collar jobs to get the same equality. But then when we treat them with equality, they get mad. They get mad. It's exactly what they wanted. But then when we start giving it to them, they have a fit and now they want to revert back to being feminine and submissive. Well, they want to have it both else. ways. It's just crazy. They want to have it both ways. And we need to be on guard because they're not going to give that up. They're going to insist on continuing to have it both ways. So now that they're telling you they're going to double back, that doesn't real, mean they're the going to give it up. It doesn't work like that. Well, it doesn't work like that until it does. It doesn't work like that until it does. Let's be very, very oh, yeah, clear. Got a point there, Let's too. be very, very clear. They're going to try to rejigger this thing. Now, that doesn't mean they're necessarily going to get everything they want, but it'll make it difficult for us in the meantime. Just because feminism is That's crumbling true. doesn't mean that masculinity is winning. Let me say it again. Just because feminism may be crumbling under its own weight doesn't equate to masculinity is winning. Well, do you think it's going to get any better in the future or is it going to somewhat get worse? The reason I'm doing the nice program is because I want men to be on notice of what the status and the situation is on the battlefield so they can start making the correct decisions about themselves. The young man I just spoke to, about telling him about, hey, this is how you need to deal with this. His girlfriend's trying to practice feminism. I'm telling him he needs to yeah, practice masculinity. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, he's letting his girlfriend press him. Well, I mean, like, like I say, be, but be afraid to say no. That's what I mean by the baby boomer generation of males. He's repeating their mistakes, telling himself he's going to win. And that's why I'm trying to get to him to let him know, and eh, that's not. This is not the winning move. This is not the winning move. So Great just show, because feminism way, Jason, is having too. a program. Now, you said show again after I told you it's broadcast. So now you're trying to be disrespectful. Oh, bro. 
Oh, I'm sorry about that. I didn't mean any of that, but. Okay. Take the night off. Thanks, thanks. Thank you very much for giving us a call here tonight. Let me get one more caller here. Let me get Caller Miracle 816. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, I'm Siobhan. I'm calling from Missouri. Hello, Siobhan. From where at in Missouri? Kansas City. All right, Siobhan from Kansas City. What's on your mind? I, I think feminism is is not working. Um, you probably already know this, Jason, because you're so well-versed and educated, but I call it the Cosmo effect. Like in the 1840s, that's when feminism started, but cosmopolitan took it mainstream. And this is for the ladies who may be listening and don't know. I'm sure you know. But there are two women in particular, Susan Browder and Helen Brown. They worked at Cosmopolitan Magazine. Susan Browder was the journalist. Helen Brown was the chief editor. And they lied to an entire well, generation um, of women. Well, let's, let's be clear. When it well, let's, really let's be started. clear. Feminism has existed since the Garden of Eden. So we do ourselves a tremendous yeah. we do ourselves a tremendous disservice if we don't acknowledge that clear reality. There is a Correct. component there is a component of the female psyche that contains mm-hmm. pure unbridled vanity. There's a component of Correct. the female psyche that does that. And it has always been something that can be taken advantage of. Always. And Vanity left unchecked becomes narcissism. That's when you find yourself in real trouble. When vanity is left unchecked, it degenerates into narcissism. The big lie that men have wanted to tell themselves is that it was Susan B. Anthony or somebody like that who, quote unquote, introduced these notions into women's heads. And that's not true. That's never been true. No, they didn't introduce anything. They there's, may have took it mainstream, yeah, but they didn't introduce there's anything. There's always been a hierarchy. That's the issue. Mm-hmm. There's always been a hierarchy among females. And feminism has been about getting the benefits that are usually reserved for the prettiest, most feminine, the females that men prefer. Feminism is about overriding men's preferences. Men will give unearned benefits and preferential treatment to women that we desire, find pleasing, accommodating. Feminism is how do Mm -hmm. I stop that? Because you're not giving them to me. Notice the females who call themselves the biggest feminists, those are the ones who don't get anything. Yeah, they got to get out there and hump it on their own. Yeah, because men don't really feel you like that. Susan B. Anthony was not a woman that men knocked over. Okay, slow down. Susan B. Anthony. Susan B. Anthony was not a female that men knocked over chairs for. She was not a man that woman that men kicked in doors for. The women that got that, you don't hear them talking about feminism. The females who can readily get positive male attention don't talk about feminism. They never have. But you, what you consider feminism, you've been hearing about that for literally thousands of years. But when you lived yeah. in a more survivalist society, the first thing the men said was, okay, are you going to come over here and help us build these houses and fight these armies over here? The women would always back down. It wasn't until we got to a post-agrarian society where the ability to get food and the ability to build shelter was outsourced in the society now you've been given such a posh, comfortable position that you can start making demands that previously you could not make because it was physically impractical and impossible. Now they're making demands that usually only women in the top five or 1% would get. Now it's been democratized in desire, even though it's not democratized in ability. Now you're dealing with that. So they've always wanted it, but it wasn't practical to demand it. And there really wasn't a pathway to get it. But let's be very, very clear throughout history. If a woman got an opportunity to lay up under a man who gives better benefits, they have never refused to take their foot off the gas. They never refused to put their foot on the gas for that one. That's always the way it is. If a better option comes along, they take that. 
But what do you do for all the options are limited. So what do you do for all the females who there's not a chair left when the music stops stops? Oh, well, let's just subjugate all the men and call it feminism. So the men will have all the responsibility and none of the authority. The women will have all the authority, none of the responsibility and absolutely none of the accountability. And that will work fine as long as the men remain equally (laughs) motivated to continue sacrificing themselves and producing. What feminism never counted on was that men would actually walk away from masculinity. Now, that was what they didn't count on. They figured that men would just remain the way they were, only now they've just been uh, broken down into submission by the state. And what they found out is, oh, no, men will just get up and walk away from masculinity altogether, and now you have to pull the wagon. Now you got a bunch of females sitting with each other and saying, oh, hell, now they're trying to vote each other off the island because the benefits are not coming the way that they used to. But I want everybody, don't fall into a false sense of security. It's not a false sense of security. We're not even beginning this. It took generations to get into this. It's going to take probably equally as long to get out of it. I'll let you have the last word. 10 seconds. Well, Jason, I really appreciate what you do. But at the same time, I know you're doing the best you can. But when it comes to our women, I am so scared for the modern women. You can't save them all. It's just not possible. And this is why men and women will never be equals. I've never agreed with that. Because women, I've seen it because I am a woman. I've seen how women make moves. They only want equality when it benefits them. They want the privilege. They want the power. They want the prosperity. But when it comes to the accountability, when it comes to the punishment, when it comes to laws being broken or prosecution, then it save all women. Then there's chivalry in the court system. This is why equality doesn't work. Do you this know what the I most do you know what the most miserable place in the world is? The most miserable place in the world for a woman to be is around a group of women that have to cooperate with her. That's the most yeah. miserable place for a woman to be. Because everybody's going to be sitting around trying to figure out how they can get one of the other women to basically act like the man and do all the work. Or if if you turn out to be the smartest, and most capable female, the moment you try to quote unquote tell them what to do, they're all going to go in unison and revolt against you. The most miserable place in the yeah. world for a woman is being in a group of other women who need to cooperate together. Thank you very much for giving us a call here tonight. All right, let me get back over here to Zoom. Like I say, we've been hanging and banging here tonight, but um, this is the program that all of your favorite YouTubers love to hate watch. Hey, if you are new here to the business, I want to welcome you to the home of intelligent thought. I want to welcome you to the epicenter and the ultimate online school of power dynamics. I don't talk or teach high value men. I build high value men into peak value men you can check my receipts and invoices i am the only person you've ever heard who can say the three words call me back so for those of you who spent the last few years being misled and you're looking for a place that is reliable a place that is knowledgeable and reliable and will say by the way i am unafraid call me back you found it click that red subscribe button Click that yellow notification bell. Join us each and every time that we are here. You will not regret it. Uh, Let me see if I can get Jeff on. Jeff, if you're still there, if Jeff's still alive, make sure he's over there. Jeff is probably running back in the room now. Where you at, Jeff? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? What's on your mind, Jeff? Hey, Doc. Um, Great show again as usual. Jeff, if you call my thing a show again, nigga. Oh, my bad, my bad, bro, my bad. Great, great broadcast. Uh, uh, great advice. Uh, uh, great platform. Great paradigm. Uh, uh, another simp saved again. Well, I don't know. This will depend upon whether your advice is as good as that girl's for JJ. Yeah, that's basically that, it. Because as, soon as, he gets off, talk, as soon as he gets off the phone with me, she going to wrap them arms or something else around him and... <laughs> It's possible that every word I say is about to fall out of his head. So I hope it doesn't happen, but I'm under no illusions. It's going to be hard to stick when she starts whispering in his ear because she's going to do things that I'm not going to do. So No, 
and I and and who he needs a, a movie he desperately needs to watch that wound up being self fulfilling prophecy is Will Smith in Hitch. Right now, he's the dude outside the library in the rain. He is the he is the uh, because I am this the most beautiful woman I see has to be that. Jeff, your camera is not on, brother. Oh, you need my camera? Oh, shit. I'm, okay. Yo! I left Jeff out, sitting around for so long, he didn't even know what he was doing there. All right, brother. Hey, he, he didn't even know. He thought he was on. He thought people were seeing him. Jeff is just, he's like, I'm flowing over here, Jeff. Nobody bro, can see I'm, you. Yeah. I'm just I'm kicking it. Uh, real talk, Jason. I don't know, to, to be honest with you, Um, that man's chief problem a is self worth and B is setting himself up for yesterday. I say this to all young cats in the future, and this is for young black women in the future. The numbers dictated it that if you want a black man that's worth anything, you're gonna have to share it. There's not enough of us to go around. So what he has been taught is that love equals marriage. Love equals contract. Love equals tying myself down. And it doesn't mean any of that. Marriage, uh, to, real quick, uh, uh, marriage is about building family. The word family breaks down to famous, which means group of workers, a taxable unit that the government can count on, which is why they penalize the man for not doing his house bond work when he divorces and splits a family. This dude don't need to be making no family with this broad. This is this a family that's trying to get rid of this broad. So what makes, uh, uh, where do you, if I may ask you, uh, where do you think as uh, brothers like us that we, our generation, fail these young cats? Well, well, how did it happen? How do we have so many were there as many simps when we were around or that I didn't see? Yeah. I grew up in Chicago. I didn't see them. Yeah. Uh, I mean, th th there were there were just as many then. If you think about it, there actually were just as many then. It was that the females didn't have the global mobility they do now. Mm -hmm. They didn't have social media to reach outside the city. So they had to move more carefully. But you were not what she really wanted. She just had to go for the best that was in her town. If she had a family with kinfolk out of town, she might be able to bounce back and forth to University of Chicago. She might be able to bounce back and forth to Detroit or bounce back and forth to St. Louis. But that's going to be it. And get right. the best she can. But so that, that was what it always was. Now she can. She has communication to them, so she mistakes contact for uh, actual commitment. That's what goes on today. That's why she's on the phone texting this other dude who's never going to make a commitment. The fellow who is going to make a commitment, she's up here screwing him over because she's got access. And as you know, they females mistake sexual access for commitment. As long as he's willing to sleep with me, I can get everything. You and I both know that's not the way it works. Oh, brother, the, the, they, they, women constantly overrate. That's, that's what cracks me up with older women talking about how I can still get attention from men. That's because men always want somewhere that they can put something warm, wet, and tight. Now, I'll give you warm and wet. Tight has to do with a whole bunch of other factors, but uh, you cannot brag on the fact that you're a mammal and your parts work. That's, that's all you're saying as an older woman. As a younger woman, women are not taught how to be worth and useful to a man outside of horizontal. So horizontal becomes the big joker. Sisters, please listen to me. If your cooter is the big joker, you'll win a few hands, but you ain't gonna never go 10 for 200 like that. Ever, ever. As long as you are overvaluing and undervaluing your hot box. I think this has happened too, is uh, the vagina bar has been lowered by y'all. Y'all lowered the vagina bar. You are the only ones who can raise it. Young black man, I hope you're still watching this show. Please understand and stay away from dudes who say, I'm going to get me some cooter. You don't get cooter. You give out ding dang, young brother. You're a dentist. What you need to do is find you another goofy female dentist. You need to stay in your in, in your uh 
metaphysical socioeconomic lane. This girl is going to use you the way buying a new Porsche would use you right now. She's a new Porsche. What the you issue is, Jeff, he's, he hasn't yeah. had experience. Something that you and I picked up earlier because we both wear glasses, but we got experience yeah. with women. You can yeah. see from him, he doesn't really socialize with people. He doesn't do that. He's he's a bookworm. That's cool. That's great. But it's a bad thing when it puts you at the disadvantage because now you're not social. You're mm. not sli- you're not worldly to the way that women are. You're seeing the sugar and spice and everything nice, even when she's showing you obvious signs because he's coming in complete and total good faith. And we live in a world that abuses young males who come in good and total good faith. It's not going to be respected. It's going to be abused. So he's got to be broken of this idea. And he feels bad. That's what I was saying. You probably feel bad about it. That's arrogant. And Okay, this is not the world we wish we had. You got to operate in the one that we're in. And all sure. you're going to do is be taken advantage of. And you and I both know there's going to be a never-ending stream of females who are going to be looking to take advantage of that. Never you know ending. This is why this is the only I was I was gonna disagree with you with your advice to him. I think another way to look at this to to give him the advice the way uh, my uncles would have gave me. You need to hurry up and be foolish. You need to marry her tomorrow, because if you don't, until you love you, she gonna show up again in other, in other flesh. Until you get it, because what brothers like that don't understand is that I have met plenty of women without integrity. I've never met one without a JJ. They all got that. They There's an aisle. There's an aisle in every major store everywhere on the planet dedicated to keeping the JJ under physical control. So this thing that I got to get this one, I got to get that one. Uh, D- Ding Ding and Cooter cancel each other out. What else do you have? This also goes to sisters. You can make a man come, but you can't make him stay unless you can make him stay fully clothed at two in the afternoon. That's that's just the realest talk I can give is that uh, this th- we put way too much in this society on sex to begin with especially in, inside of a, a a construct where uh, even feminism can live. That's another thing, bro. Feminism only can live where masculinity lives. If we take masculinity out of the equation, there is no feminist. It crumbles. Why don't you ask where the feminists are in the Ukraine right now? Once, once a, a shit get really real, feminism doesn't have any legs to stand on. Because you, you have to have a really coddled society to have feminism. Yes. Yes. It, it feminism, can, feminism cannot naturally exist. You've no. got to create some artificial puffball fictional society that doesn't have any real issues to deal with. And then feminism can actually become something. You got to nerf the world. You got to nerf the world. You got to put uh, uh, guardrails up. You got to... Uh, those baby things, the little the baby the little baby cushions you put on the legs of the chairs and the tables and things. Yeah, yeah. you got to childproof. You have to childproof the society in order for for feminism to take root. And the real truth is, brother, and this is what really kills me. And I'll I'll say this and uh, get out your face and keep enjoying your program. I will not make that mistake again. Um, is that feminism, especially in America? is truly about the white woman not getting her fair share of what her man stole from the Indians. That ain't got a damn thing to do with you, black woman. Oh, no, 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 shit, if I may, if I may. Uh, Also, uh, I don't know if you covered it. I came in a little late. Have you covered Ciara's dress yet? Uh, I saw it, and I've mentioned Russell and her before. I didn't mention the dress, but yeah, she was, she was, she's continuing her campaign of emasculating and making a fool of him. He has allowed her to turn him more like her, not the other way around. So, oh yeah, by the way, good Christian Russell Wilson, by the way. Yeah. Right, right, bruh, 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 what Christian man? Here, here's what she is saying is that the most sacred thing I have does not belong to him. It belongs to everybody. 
I don't have anything that belongs strictly to this man except the shit I'm going to split up when I leave him. I, bruh, I give, uh, uh, you want to put a countdown on it? Uh, uh, I give her 12 months from the day and not 13 before she will file for divorce. No, I'll tell really? you, I'll tell you when, she, uh, if everybody wants to know my calculus on Ciara, yeah. my calculus on Ciara is when they cancel her deals. Mm. When mm. the, when the out, when the exterior benefits, cause she's pretending to be a good wife. When those ancillary benefits dry up, cause you know, she couldn't get a phone call from L'Oreal a cover girl before she got with him. When that goes away, look for CR to start heading to the exits. Wow. Well, but she ain't got no record. Oh, okay. She got the L'Oreal deal. Yeah. Dude, so, wait, wait till those merchandise and those, um, uh, what do they call them? A product endorsement. When them endorsement deals, when all that dries up, look for her to start heading to the exits then because he has outlived his usefulness to her independently. So it's like, okay, it's time to cash you out, nigga. It's time to cash you out. Damn. If you're asking my calculus, because seeing what kind of broad she is and how she get down, no, she knows that he's the last train leaving. She knows she isn't going to get anything after this. So she's the most dangerous type of snake of all. She's going to take everything because she knows there will not be another one. There won't be another future. There won't be another Russell. So when she does bounce this next time, it's got to be for all the marbles. So look for when the deals start drying up and they stop calling. Then she's going to start heading towards the exits. In other words, think of it more like Giselle Bunchen. When she starts thinking, okay, we're coming to the end of this run. Um, Nicole Young, we coming to the end of this run. All right, it's time to cash you out. So you don't, you really, I, I don't think the last straw is going to come from her. I really don't. I think. Well, she knows he's not going anywhere. So she knows as long as she's willing to stand there, he will be there. So there's no, there's no pressure on her to do anything. I don't know about that, brother Jason. You know, okay, hear me out. This dude is a, 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 a NFL quarterback in the locker room on the field with dudes that see his wife like this. You don't think the defense ain't yelling across the ball? Hey, man, we finna run a train on that right after the game. Hey, man, that's how you get down out there? That's how you get out at home? How you going to get down out here when you letting it go down? I think that the peer pressure is going to cause Russell Wilson to crack, bro. I really do. I don't think he that big a simp. I, no. Or I think his simp threshold is going to be broken. No, he's he's been, he's been upholding it this long. He's not going anywhere. Nothing's going to break him. If she doesn't get up and leave, he's not going anywhere. Thank you very much for giving us a call here tonight, Jeff. Uh, let me get... Pascal, let me go ahead and bring you in here. Go ahead and turn your mic and your uh, camera on, Pascal. I know you've been waiting for a minute. All right, Pascal, what's on your mind, brother? All right, good evening, brother. Uh, I just wanted to touch on the topic that we have for today. And, um, you know, I'm just trying, to, I'm just thinking aloud. Is it possible that we have, we've had this major fun dysfunctionality in the, in the black community because of, you know, um, the agenda, the social engineering, like pushing the alternative lifestyle on us, on, on the, on the family and also on the, the society? So it's just something that I was just touching. I was just thinking about with the as far as the topic that we have today is concerned. Well, I mean, certainly that's been a big part of it, and that was the plan. Confusion. Can you get people concentrating on something other than rebelling against the system? Can you get them to elevate something else? I mean, if you have a society, and remember, the Soviet Union did this. For any of you who want to go read George Orwell's 1984, I mean, the man said it decades ago when they were seeing the rise of the Soviet Union after Stalin. Uh, he, he, he saw it then. Oh, give them liquor, pornography. So you got them chasing low level little pleasures. You know what they're not doing? Rebelling against the overall system. So if you can keep them narcissized, as long as they're focusing on those things, 
that's where you want them to be. George, I hope the okay, I was about to say I did the police kick in the dough. All right, but um, as long as they are focusing on these other things, you turn your microphone off, George. You turn your mic off. And he's okay. working on it. Okay, I hope you settle Sorry down. About that, uh, Jason, there was noise coming out. Was no, he said no, he said they they knocking on the trap trap house though right now. Is George? I got. Jason, I gotta make a little bit of money right quick. I, I, I didn't mean to interrupt your profits in a break. But um, you, you've seen about this for decades, so they've always known that we can keep you narcissized. Why do you think that in, in, in countries, in Islamic countries, why they keep the people so focused on the religion? Guess what they're not fighting against? And this has been old as time. Old as time. We're as old as statism. Let me say this. As old as statism. States have always understood to keep this thing going, the population got to go along with it. But the population's not going to go along with it if they're not getting a fair share. So you either give them a fair share that would keep them placated or you keep them distracted while they're not getting it. So you, you're going to invest in one of those two things. You're either going to invest in paying everybody the same thing or you're going to invest in distracting them. What will it be? Governments usually choose what? Distract them. So now, as long as people, they, they, that's why they monitor our national conversations to see what we're talking about. Are you talking about something that's going to disrupt and overthrow the system? Or are you talking about sexual access? Oh, really? Well, as long as you're talking about that, guess what you're not discussing? Now, think about this for a few moments. If you're an Anthony Fauci, last thing in the world you want is for people to stop talking about sex. because then goes, By the way, who's that guy who has taken them vaccines? Understand something, you know, that's why uh, George R. R. Martin, great writer when he could actually finish a book um, from Game of Thrones, when the Sparrow said, you know, we are the many, you are the few to the rich folk. He said, we are the many and you are the few. And what happens when the many stop fearing the few? And then he walked off. So just understand if you're Bill Gates, if you're Anthony Fauci, you are living in a constant state of terror and paranoia. What will happen when the masses stop focusing on cell phones, weed, booty models? What will they do? Well, you've already seen what they'll do. It's always very finely balanced and it doesn't take a whole lot. When they locked everything down during the pandemic, what was the first thing that happened? The uprisings. A lot of that had to do with George Floyd. Yes, but a lot of that was a lot of folks didn't want to be stuck at home. And they were like, hey, we're just going to go for it now. It's hard to control masses of people when they're unhappy. Hard. You better keep them distracted. If you lose the ability to keep them distracted, they take to the streets and, well, we know what happens next. Yeah, and, and Jason, just, just following up, I've been an ardent listener of your program, you know, just following up on what you've been saying, you know, the, the foundation of Black Americans are the trendsetters. That's why the energy and the effort and the finances has been heavily focused on trying to buy the black family into the programming you know the people like uh, the wayne wayne uh, the, you know those type of uh you know top celebrities even the the will smith you know bringing all the form of alternative lifestyle and trying to force us to normalize it i know the black family is like you know, anything that the black family consigns globally the black family in america consigns globally it goes as a trend so they have struggled so hard to force it on, on the family. And they have met with a lot of resistance, specifically from the B1 uh, brigade. And, you know, that's why it's falling apart because the black family never co-signed for it. They're putting a lot of money, millions, trying to break down the black family, trying to project the woman like, you know, the, the main uh, voice of the black family. They've done all this just because they've wanted the black family to embrace it then the entire globe will take it as a trend. You know, the, the black family in America are the trendsetters. So, but they fought so hard, but the family rejected it. You know, I always say that the black family is a moral compass of America. If, they had, if the black family had really gone with the programming, I believe that where we stand now, the entire world will be dancing towards it. But because of the resistance of the black family, that's why the face this challenge, and now you see an internal revolt, as you just said this evening. There's an internal revolt amongst themselves, you know. They're tearing themselves apart. But I think it's because the family said, we are not taking this down. It's not part of our of, of our, our being, you know. 
Well, it's about being on code. And before now, we had to rely on the old media, the corporate media, the old black media, which was basically lockstep and in line with them. They were co-opted. Now you've got a more free-floating discussion from entities that are not owned by these apparatchiks and these government fronts and things. So you got a more free floating conversation going and now it's cleared out the clutter and people are realizing, by the way, yeah, we don't really go along with that to begin with. Up until now has been that because remember Prop 8 in California, you would have figured that would have passed, you know, with flying colors and got it's no, they, they bar they voted against gay marriage in California when it came up for a vote. Now you notice they don't ever want to bring it up for a vote again. They said, yeah, screw that. We're never going to bring it up for a vote again. We'll just take it to the courts and say, yeah, the courts have decided we can't vote on that anymore. So just understand this is about control. This is about control. It always has been. And when you eliminate the warrior class from the home, then control becomes very easy. When the warrior class is where it's supposed to be, controlling people becomes a lot more difficult. So, yes, it's about those things. Do you have an alternative agenda? Can you get the women to buy into foolishness? Can you get the men to buy into it? They just chip it from all areas and all directions. You're under a never-ending siege. So, basically, what I'm telling you is that it is part of the national budget of every nation to invest in keeping us distracted. It's in the national budget. Jason, uh, you can't really mean that. People, do you know your internet companies get get taxpayers, they get taxpayer benefits, if not taxpayer subsidies. AT&T and the rest of them that build out the broadband network, they get direct taxpayer subsidies. I can go down the list. I can go down the list. So they get money. The, the, the government invests in that. The international corporate structure invests in it for the sole purpose of keeping you distracted. Let me leave you with this one thought here. You don't have the best athletes in the NBA, contrary to popular belief. You don't. You have the, quote, best athletes who would go with the program. Yeah. Ask Kyrie Irving. Yeah. Your talent is, is obviously, it is not your talent that they care about most because look how quickly they were willing to get rid of Kyrie Irving. Obviously, it's not your talent. And before him, Rockman, 25 years ago, 25, 30 years ago. Obviously, it's not about talent. When you take a look at the so-called music industry today, you know there ain't no talent there. So who are they giving record deals to? The folks who push the agenda. Yeah, but there's more talented people you could have given it to. Yeah, but we can't control him. We're not. I'm not going to put $10 million behind a force I can't control. I would rather make $5 million on something I can control than make $100 million on something I can't. Now, you know that strategically as part of war. Yeah. You'd be a fool to, in, to get to get $100 million from something you can't control. That's what America's learning from China right now. Okay, you're making all them billions of dollars. Yeah, but you can't control them. Now they're shaking hands with the damn Russians. Oops. Should have just stuck with that $5 million. I'll let you have the last word. Thanks, brother. There's one last thing that I want to throw out there. Uh, you know... Um, Currently, you know, we've been seeing how Joe Biden, I've been wondering why Joe Biden has been piling laws upon laws on the LGBT. And now I heard about him bringing the issue on interracial marriages. So one thought crossed my, crossed my mind. You know, it, some years back, nobody could believe that he could strike down Roe versus Wade. Now it came down. And they foresee that, uh, you know, laws that has been put in place for the alphabet people, it's very possible that if someone like Trump could come in again, it's possible that that would be his next on onslaught. And also, he's already started talking about uh, genital, this gender gender change, you know, change of gender and that type of stuff. He's really attacking it right from his, you know, at the, at the base. He's really campaigning and attacking it. That, that is what he's coming after. So that's why you see the Democrats or uh, Biden putting tons upon tons of law on the LGBT, uh, f uh, you know, um, family because he understands that if Roe vs. Wade can go down, then there's a possibility that the alphabet, you know, laws that they have put in place, the laws for the alphabet people can also be struck down. So that's why you see him doing all the laws, putting all the laws that he's putting in. And also now he just threw in also the interracial marriage talk because he's, he knows that those things can also be striked. Them can also be yeah, I mean, they, they, those don't speak for the masses. When they put mm -hmm. those things into place, they don't speak for the masses. Their goal is to try to convince you and fool you into thinking they're speaking for you. And in reality, they don't speak for the masses. And they yeah. never have. 
But if we can keep you distracted long enough, the real goal isn't to convince you. The real goal is just as long as you're not fighting us. As long as you'll just sit here and let us roll like we gonna roll, even if you vehemently disagree. Are you gonna let us roll the way we gonna roll? You will? Well, then we'll take that as a win. Because in reality, when you think about it, it is. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight, George. We appreciate that. Appreciate that. Let me see if I can get uh, Ryan. Ryan on Zoom. You are up next. All right, Ryan, you are front and center. Looking like Drake. What's on your mind? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. All right, Ryan, you are front and center. Yes, turn like- off the speakers, please. Thank you. All right. Uh, yeah, it's just, yeah, thanks for having me on the program and um, really appreciate what you're doing here. Um, just to kind of touch on a caller from earlier, just want to extend my thoughts, like, what he's about to get himself like embroiled in like as much as we want to say or like give him sort of a heads up or warning like a young guy who's inexperienced and is in that sort of dynamic like if he's hell-bent on making the wrong decision he's going to make the wrong decision and like you had a caller earlier i think can't remember his name, but he was saying that like he kind of needs to go through that. And I think it is necessary for him to go through that kind of um, learning curve. And just to touch on like, because you've been talking about a lot of things tonight, like about affordability and, you know, financial management and stuff like that. And like, I happen to work in the space, in the real estate space. And like here in Canada, it's even worse because like right now, I don't know if you're, I think you're pretty familiar with Toronto. Like we have a bit of a, like we're booming right now, but we also have a huge affordability crisis. And like in the United States, you know, when you get a mortgage, like you're fixed, you're in it for either a long term or it might be in perpetuity or stuck at a certain rate. But here in Toronto, if you get a mortgage, most of the mortgages, especially the ones that were entered into at the peak of the market, like those were, those mortgages are going to mature in about five years. And if interest rates are anywhere near where they are right now, people are going to be rolling over their debt. They're going to be refinancing at around the same interest rate or, or at the interest rate that it's at right now, which is a lot higher than what they entered in at. So like, I think what I want to say to men who are watching this program is that things are getting very tight out there. And Jason, like, you're very educated. You're very articulate, eloquent. You you know probably better than I do that where we are in this sort of cycle. And it's a critical time where you can't be making bad financial decisions. You have to like align yourself with the right kind of people. I don't have a lot of people that are my age. I have a few that are my age. I have some that are older than me that come with like a wealth of experience. They tell me about what inflation was like in the 1970s. They tell me about what the in, what happened with interest rates, and what happened here, and what happened there. And yeah, we're I we're getting the, a more civilized version of it now, but it's it's yeah. it's no less devastating for a young person coming up. I will I will disagree with the idea that he, he needs to have a learning curve. Yes, I agree with that idea, but he doesn't need to have it with her. Because yeah. that would be the same as me saying, okay, there's a chick out there who, you know, she wants to get, she wants to jump on the baby daddy train and whatnot. I'm not going to encourage her to do that. I'm like, yeah, she needs to go through the experience, but you don't need to go through that with him. Oh yeah. I, you, I, because here's the problem. She can't, that's a, that's a mistake. She can't walk away from this yeah. young man right here. I know the type of chick he's talking to. So she's, she's not wrapping his head up for nothing. She's doing it until, quote unquote, something better comes along. However, nothing better is going to come along for her. So what she's going to do, because she's entering her late 20s, once she gets to the age of 28, then she's going to be all in to keep him locked down. But just understand how the progression will go. The progression will not go. We're going to get married until we're not. The progression will go. We're going to get married. And then she's immediately going to start pushing for kids when she sees him heading towards his internship. We're going to start residency or whatever their equivalent is for that, for the Donnas. She's going to start pushing for that. Once she sees that he's 
fit to go the distance, she's going to be like, okay, let me lock him down with something that will hold him against his will. They want to talk about men's sexual assault. That's sexual assault. Let me get something on him that is against his will. I got a marriage on him, but now if I can get a couple of kids, that's it. I've got him locked down. Or yeah, at the very least, even if he does wise up and leave, I'm going to have access to everything for henceforth and forth She's already not trying to work like she needs to. You got a yeah. chick, you got to kick her in the ass to get her to finish doing what she's doing. She's not serious about that. She expects you to carry the freight, especially if she's got champagne glasses. Oh, she's like, oh, look, she's probably telling all her family and friends, yes, I'm dating a guy. He's going to, he's going to be an orthodontist. And she's already counting up how much of his money she's going to be spending. So I, he needs to wisen up. But let me tell you right now, he can, get, he can get that experience with just three girlfriends and never marry any of them. What the problem isn't that he doesn't have enough experience with her. The problem is he doesn't have enough experience with women. Yeah. Period. This is probably the only chick. He, he's probably only dated two chicks in his whole life, and she's probably the first and the third one. So um, I'm, he needs more experience with women, period, so he can see, oh, they all like this. Oh, this is what they all do. So then it won't be this big surprise and shock to the system, and he'll lose his naivete without losing yeah. his, his resources and his future. Yeah. No, no, I, you know, you're, you're exactly right. And it's like, I got kind of like I felt like I needed to call in when I watched that because like I have a few years on him. I'm not that I'm older than him. And like I've been in that position before where, you know, when you were in high school and when you were in elementary school, like you were that, you know, you were that kid that nobody was talking to or you might might, might have liked that girl or whatever. And then all of a sudden she's interested in you and you're on the come up and like. I know what it's like to be in that position. I know where his head, head is at, but he has to recognize the value that he brings to women, the value that he brings to a relationship. And I think the ultimate point that I'm trying to make is that in this economy, what's going on right now, people have to, young men and young women, like have to seriously educate themselves, know their worth, know their value, and like concern themselves with personal ex excellence as they navigate through this and because this sort of thing if he gets caught up in this sort of thing like it's gonna cause well my problem is he's a bookworm and that's great because i'm a bookworm too but the problem is with you in the book so long there's a real world out here and he hasn't really done a lot of interacting with it he's naive yeah. to it he's unsuspecting to it and it'd be great if you lived in the world of other naive unsuspecting people but you don't you live in a world of very calculating and quite frankly abusive individuals who will take advantage of you with no mercy or forethought this is a yeah. chick, the fact that she's doing this at this early age, this chick is well-versed at it. So she's a scheming chick with experience in scheming up against a dude who's completely unarmed. He doesn't even think to do that kind of thing to her. She's moving like a snake and he doesn't even think to move like one, or at least to put up a snake fence. He doesn't even think to do something like that. So what I'm saying is intellectually and emotionally, he's completely unarmed. All he can do is be taken advantage of. This is not a result of being with her. This is a result of not being with anybody else. So what he needs to do is have a situation where he can deal with a female where there is no pressure on him. You're not expected to marry her. You're not expected to take care of her. You're not expected to take, have no kids with her. You are just expected to deal with her and be comfortable with her for an extended period of time and have your needs met and see how that feels or how that goes. What is she requiring of you? What do you require of her without the um, obligation or pressure to make some sort of permanent attachment or commitment? That's how you're supposed to do because the chip, some effect of the matter is she's already demonstrating through her actions, not her words. She's demonstrating through her actions that she can already not make a permanent attachment to him. She's keeping options open, at least for what she wants to entertain. That's a warning sign, but it's a warning sign because he's, he's opened the door and let her know you're the only one for me. I'm not even trying to entertain somebody else. I'm not even trying to. Well, Jason, I talked to a couple of the females. Clearly, they clearly you didn't think they were as bad as she is. By the way, you're acting. Clearly, they weren't as good as her in your mind. Because you're already tolerating, you're already ready to accept outrageous things over here. So he needs more female experience. He needs to deal with more females. He needs to deal with females so that he can 
start cultivating and practicing getting them to value him. What I'm yeah. saying is he needs more practice. Yeah. He's going to be on the job. It's one thing if you're on the job training with somebody who's in your best interest, you're on the job training with a snake. And the yeah. only thing that can happen is him getting taken advantage of. So no, if he marries her, he will want make a permanent, he'll make a permanent mistake. It was one thing back in the seventies when the child support laws weren't what they were. And the alimony laws weren't what they were. That was one thing back then. Welcome to 2023. Yeah, She's man. not stupid. She, she didn't grab him for nothing. She was like, oh, orthodontist school. Oh, he's serious. He got his financial aid. And his grant. He's enrolled. He's a junior. Oh, you know, we got to get married now, right? You know, we got to get married now. You know, we got to go ahead and do this. Well, I'm 26 years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to hurry up and do this right. Oh, I'll go ahead and go ring shopping. And meanwhile, here's the problem in a nutshell. You're going to make her a wife. But she is neither acting nor moving like a wife. That's the issue. This woman is not wife material. She is not treating you like the husband who is respected in the home. That's the problem. She ain't wife material. You're trying to make a wife out of something that isn't. That's yeah. his problem. And if he deals with some other females, he can now have something to compare her to. He needs to be dealing with one of them chicks in his class is who he needs to be talking to. Somebody else who's out there trying to get in. I'm not saying he should marry her either. I'm not saying that he should marry her either. But he needs to deal with a chick who got something going for herself that he actually has to compete for. That he's actually got to beat out some competition. Because right now he's a sad sack. He's not used to competing and winning. He needs to show himself yeah. that he can win. That he can compete for something that's worth having and win. Then he going to be looking at her different. Because the first thing he's going to say is now... I'm an aspiring orthodontist and I was I was competing with this chick over here. Who's competing for you again? Oh, them bum niggas blew out his knee in college and he's sitting on the corner now. Okay, but who else is competing for you? Because so far as I can tell, I'm the highest bidder. That's what a man needs experience with a female so that he's competing with other men who are putting in high bids. So he can prove, now you're going to have value. Now you pegged the value to her. Because you say, hey, there's, a, there's another doctor, there's a lawyer, something. Okay, there's competition for this chick. If, there'll be, if there's competition, there's competition for a reason. If there's no competition or if the competition is low quality, it's low quality for a reason. Yeah. He I gotta, needs to spend that time and learn. Yeah. I, I th you bring up a really good point because that, that was kind of like a turning point for me where I had, a, like, I had experimented with like a woman like that. And it was that sort of thing. And like, I, I totally get what you mean. I got a question for you though, Jason, because I, I was just thinking about this, like with him and the fact that like, he's a young black man and he's intelligent and he doesn't fit with the, like I'm Canadian, you know, I'm from Toronto. So he doesn't fit with, I guess, maybe that North American or that American stereotypical urban young guy. So he, is in this space where maybe he doesn't fit with sort of like, I don't know, like he's kind of stuck in this in-between place where like he doesn't even know if he can be competitive or if he's wanted or if he can compete because like it's hard to, it's like, it's like a inferiority complex where it's like you don't fit in this space. You don't fit in that white space or that other space. Like, do you think that that's potentially an, an element here at all. Like, no, it's, it's not potentially an element. It is. The reason yeah. why she's looking at other men is because they have confidence. Even yeah. if they don't have resources, there's no substitute for confidence. That's why I was telling him she's with a guy who, if a fight broke out, she's not sure what he would do. So biologically, he's lacking the physical alpha male cues and the emotional alpha male cues. Mm -hmm. Now, intellectually, he's got it. But socially, emotionally, he's lacking it. So she's looking in other places where she can get that get that type of energy. What he lacks is confidence. I don't care if you're the biggest bookworm in the world because I have been. In case y'all couldn't tell, I still am. But you know what a female is not going to tell you about Jason Black? That he's not confident. Yeah. And I can pull any broad that I want to. But it's not because I'm the cutest nor the richest. It's got nothing to do with that right there. Yes, my money is straight, so being broke is not the issue. Okay, but it takes more than money. Yeah, money is required, but money ain't the only thing. But I'm confident. I'm, I'm not the smartest person in the world. I'm not the dumbest, but I'm not the smartest person in the world either. 
but I'm confident in what I do. And that gives a woman something that she can invest in. Yeah. So it doesn't so, matter how square you are. Being square is not an excuse for not being confident. I'm a square dude. Right. I've never had a drink in my life, never smoked, never had a daiquiri, never done illicit drugs, never set foot in a strip club. Only set foot in the bar once by accident, didn't know what door I pushed and turned right around. So what I'm saying, I'm, I'm the squarest dude you're ever going to find. And yet I ain't moving like him. Explain why that is. One of us has developed confidence and the other one hasn't. And if he gets more experience, then get some wins under his belt. Confidence becomes a side effect. And now, because the chick he's dealing with is very confident in herself, at least in her ability to get him, he needs to be confident in his ability to do better than her. Then he can start making a real judgment about her, which right now he isn't able to make because he has not proven that he can get a better chick than her. If he can get a better one than her, then now he can actually determine whether he's making a decision or whether he's just settling for what he can get, which is where he currently is. He needs confidence that confidence is going to come when he gets experience having just one or two females you dealt with in your life is not going to help you he needs to have a few more so he has something to compare it to and then decide who needs to be with this orthodontist and yes you need to get smacked around a little bit but he doesn't need to get into a permanent situation with somebody who's no good for him he he can learn he can get solve that learning curve without that happening That'll be a well, mistake we can never it. fix. We we staged a pretty good intervention tonight, eh? Well, we'll we'll okay. see, brother. Like I say, because if she was watching or if she hears about it, she's gonna be on the phone before we get off. You ain't gonna listen to that nigga. Are you? <laughs> we, 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 we've been together since high school. We, well, actually, we haven't been together. You let him put thoughts in your head. Well, I mean, should not think it over here. No, you should not. I'm gonna leave. And that's the other thing, right there, brother. They come over there. She's gonna be low cut cleavage, put some perfume on. And yeah. I'm, I'm hoping it's strong enough for him because we're talking about survival now. That's yeah. how young men end up red pill and black pill. That's how they end up jaded and cynical. Yeah. That's how they end up talking about passports and, and chasing white women. That's how they end up like that. And it's not because the black chicks are evil. It's because you're naive. And you there's plenty of snakes out here. And it's not doing him any favors teaching him that there are no snakes. There's plenty of them. You need to be ready to deal with them. Stop pretending that they don't exist. He was he was endorsing everything I said. He was agreeing with everything I said. At this point right now, this is this is an IQ test. Yeah. This is Reluctantly, just an IQ test. Though, that's the thing. Reluctantly, and he was kind of I don't know. All you can he do is all you can do is tell him. Get out of his comfort zone. Yeah, I mean, yeah. all you can do is tell him. That's all we can do is tell him if he does get caught in the trick bag, he can't say it's because nobody told him he would have to admit, hey, I was just weak and desperate and it was just easier to go along with her program than it was to help myself. So at the end of the day, you can't save everybody. Hopefully, and and I I don't save anybody. Contrary to popularities, I don't save anyone. All I do is give you some facts and you save yourself. That's the only way it can work. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. We appreciate that. Man, do you all take a look at how long you all have held me up here tonight? It's over four hours. Over four hours. We must have been rocking and rolling, so we're good to go here. Like I say, hey, feminism is crumbling, but just because feminism is crumbling does not mean that masculinity is winning. Recognize the rules of the road. Recognize the rules of the road. If you are new here to the business, welcome to the program that all of your favorite YouTubers love to rip off. You're going to hear them. uh, You hear the same lines that you hear me say. You'll be hearing them say it tomorrow or next week. But you heard it here first. Click that red subscribe button. Click that yellow notification bell. Join us each and every time that we're here. If you haven't joined our patron, the link is in the description. We do it every weekend. You get to talk to me one-on-one for an extended period of time. So you definitely want to be there as well. Great environment to be in. A lot of big things coming up. We're cooking a whole lot over here. Check it out. Stick around. See what's coming up. 
I want to thank everyone who has contributed to support tonight's program on PayPal, Cash App, Super Chat. I see y'all over there in Super Chat. Chris Ellis, uh, Rick Green, uh, Daryl Nelson, Dijon Ford, everybody who's contributed to tonight's program. Thank you very much as well. Cash App, Super Chat, Venmo, PayPal. Thank you very much for your support. It's always appreciated. Thank you to all of you who have tuned in and watched live or recorded. And this concludes tonight's broadcast of The Business. I am your host, your brother, your humble servant, Mr. Jason Black. And until next time, my brothers and my sisters from around the world, remember, handle your business or your business will handle you. <laughs>